Today's hangout is sponsored by Jim's Airbrushing. You need the airbrushing, Jim will spray it. There we go. There he is. Do a dance, Jim. Do a dance. We are live. Say hello, everyone, to Jim. Jim was the inspiration for the character Jim. of Up. And there we hello, go. Jim. We can see the expert in his natural habitat. There's no, no model. He's not airbrushing the thing. He's just pretending. Maybe he's spraying his nails. I tell you what, though, he looks comfy considering he's inside that box. <laughs> Doesn't he? There we go. So, a different start to the live show. We might as well watch Jim doing this. There he comes. He's back. I wonder if Jim actually does realize that we are live. Well, Hello, Jim. Hello. Hello. Might as well put my camera on then as well. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Friday Night's Live with the Bench Show. As you can see, we are sponsored by Jim's Airbrushing. He's an expert sprayer. And we'll leave it there. So, <laughs> hope, hopefully, everybody's had, everybody's had a good week. Everyone stayed safe. Um, and you're going to join us tonight for a, a few hours of shenanigans and jokes and me cutting everybody off before they say something wrong, as usual. Um, if you're in the chat, say hello. If you've got any questions or comments, pop them in there. I'm sure we'll get through them that, uh, tonight. Uh, the Hangout tonight is also sponsored by Tim Shirts. If you need a shirt, you can wear week after week <laughs> with, without hiding it. Hold up, doing my buttons up. So, yeah, go, no, undo them. Undo them. Oh, hang on a minute. Oh, hang on a minute. I've realised something. What? <laughs> oh, my God. I said that mucking round earlier, and you have got it inside out. No, it's a new it's version that nice. hides the buttons. I said that earlier, messing it, about, it, and you have actually got it inside it, it out. It does make a bit of hard to do. <laughs> Before we were alive, I was joking with Tim. He said he washed it. I said, don't lie, you turn it inside out. Is it actually inside out? Did you mess it inside out? Oh, my God, Tim. <laughs> Thanks, Trish. Yeah, no worries. Cheers, Trish. Thank you. So, anyway, as you can see, we're completely unprepared. Uh, and uh, welcome aboard, everybody. So, everyone's keeping well. Uh, we've got Jim with us tonight as a special guest. Jim is going to now sing all our intro songs for us for each segment through the night. Uh, like I say, was your inspiration for the guy on Up, whose name I forget? Carl. Carl, that's it, yes. Um, and he's a special guest tonight. Norman's going to be interviewing him again. Um, oh, boy. <laughs> no, he's not. Uh, you're, you're interviewing Norm. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, we've also got Luke, Sam, Al, Norman, Dan, and Tim, and me, obviously, as well. So, hello, everyone. Hope everyone's had a good week. I think most of the crew are knackered, but they're all here. Good evening. Hello. Hello. <laughs> and there we go. And Hello. Sam's here. Hopefully he's not butchered himself or got the mange this week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the camera's gone off. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. So, um, usual Friday show. We've got Tim looking at all the latest kits, I think. Yep. Uh, Dan, look at all the work on the Facebook page and forum. Uh, questions for the crew by Al. Uh, I think Tim might be doing what we've been buying as well. We've got a competition, um, random number generator, really easy to win. Just your product number in the chat. And uh, start numbers now. And we've also got a prize for the um, most voted for build of the week in dance section. So it's a 20 pound UMP gift voucher. Um, for the random number generator and ten pound for the um, most voted build of the week. I'll put my glasses back on because I literally can't see. <laughs> and there we are. So um, yeah, we'll be here for a few hours. I don't know how long. I'm just going to sort all my chats out so I can see everything. Okay. Got your chaps out. My chaps. <laughs> don't don't worry, they're not the arseless ones. <laughs> don't, they're in the wash. <laughs> they're inside out. No, they're in the wash. Daniel, that was a joke, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. And so it begins. Yeah. Hey. So Wait, I'll read some of the chat. Tim's gone off to put his shirt on the right way, probably. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's Trish helping you with the buttons. <laughs> oh. grand. No, I thought I'd leave it that way because it's it's. Oh, cool. what a surprise! Tim's got some food. No, I thought <laughs> I, forgot, I forgot to grab. I forgot to look. I've, I've, oh, he's dropped I've it. I uh, chucked it. I've got oh, a club. 
And a half Maybe eaten. You like a lot of chocolate Nothing. on your biscuit. Pick up. Oh, no, club. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, shoe, sugar, blue, driftwood. My God. Can't it just be called Pete? It makes life so much easier. <laughs> no. Um, says first. I hate people that do that. I'm not going to lie. They're, they're people that live in their basements with their mum. Uh, with their mums? <laughs> Yeah, with their mums. Yeah. Oh no. Honestly, I, I can't stand that first thing. I just oh. think what Stan shouted to me in the car today. Which is <laughs> uh, David Ball says good evening. Phil Barris is there. Evening. Hey Phil. Uh, Sugar Blue Driftwood says hello, hello. Uh, Daryl Masters there saying evening all. Steve Parcher says evening one and all. Hope you're all doing well. Uh, Daryl says go Jim. Uh, oh, apparently we've got some official sponsorship for Jim. By Old Man Jeans. No. Oh. Um, Harry's there saying good evening, folks. Al's in there as well. Uh, Goda, uh, Blue Dr- Oh, my God, I can't say that name. Sugar Blue Driftwood. Calling you Jeff. Jeff says nice right. duck nice ducked work. Oh, nice duck. Right. Uh, Norman's in there saying hello. Luke's in there saying hello. Sean White says evening, folks. Steve says even and all. Stuart says even and all. Hope everyone's well. Harry says uh, do it. Hit that like button. Indeed. Uh, Drew like one's button. there as well. And hi everyone. Jeff Jaff saying good evening. And Tim, away you go. Um, um, Dwight at the Northern Star, my favourite modelling show. You sure? I don't know. <laughs> Let us know where it is. We could, I think we could do it watching something like that. Can yeah. I just read Daryl's comment where he put Tim looks like a CNA catalogue model? <laughs> that's sort of yeah. I, I, don't know if, I don't know if that's a that's yeah. CNA was great if you wanted shitty woolly jumpers. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I love the woolly jumper and a bad the looking bra. The really itchy my, ones. My granddad used to buy his suits from there and Burton's, and yeah, they were never never good hanging suits. It looked like a looked like they had, they had very old ladies. They had very old lady style bras and knickers and stuff. Oh. Well. <laughs> <laughs> trust trust him to know that. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Oh my. Oh, Timothy. Oh, yeah. Uh, John Howe, very good evening to everyone. Yeah, Tim looks like the CNA catalog model. Well, I might wear that sort of thing. Um, Jeff Jass says, drinking game. Every time Paul tells Tim, Dan, moving on, take a drink. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. No. That'd be a hard I'm night. Similar to that. And- Eggs get harmed in the middle of the night. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> We've had those sort of evenings. Hang on, this sounds like something they got convicted of. <laughs> it's, it's the sort of evening that uh, Luke pulls out the strange drink that he got from Spain and ends up a bit too... <laughs> oh, I haven't had any of that for ages. Oh, it's, oh, it's a crack it, oh, no. it Crack it open. What's Come that? On. Later. What are we talking about? A weird drink that looked up when he was. Oh, yeah, go get that look. Luke it, 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 it hit him halfway through a sentence, and you could tell <laughs> it was starting the sentence knowing what he was talking about, in the end of the sentence, not knowing a clue what was really going on. It was great. <laughs> um, it's like you change nationalities halfway through. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, it's buttons up there. Button. Uh, Drew one purchase. Drew one purchase. Uh, in hospital, so not may not be on for long. Oh, Drew, hope you're okay. Oh, there. Okay, you're okay. Yeah, okay. Right. Yeah. Uh, Malcolm Plum, evening everyone. Jeff Light, good evening everyone. Hope and trust that everyone is keeping well. Hello, Jeff. We're doing well. Um, are, are we still are we still on gym cam? No. No. Shouldn't be. I am. No, we're not. Okay, cool. Um, okay. Luke Ward, morning. Hundred percent what? So that's definitely Bob. Uh, Suck Peeps, the man that changes his name more than McDonald's. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> morning. I mean, hi from Luke Ward. Yeah. Uh, John Stone, greetings once. Greetings once again, slaves to the plastic. Hope we all have a great show. Model on. Hello, John. Hello, Mr. Hello. Thank you. Daryl saying, whoa, full turnout. Love it. Yeah, I think we're all nearly all here, except for the, uh, pardon me, the Sharpe. Um, Brian Windmill, uh, evening. Rudiger Adams, evening. Yeah. <laughs> Good evening or <laughs> afternoon, everyone. I, I was talking about that today to Chunk that five years ago, I blacked an Indian call centre to believe my name was Rudiger. 
Yeah. And to this, to oh, yeah. this day, I occasionally still get phone calls asking for Rudiger Bratland. <laughs> <laughs> that, that name always tickles me. That one. Yep. Always does. Oh, dear. <laughs> Um, Steve Parks is saying Dan's got his hat on hat in the right way. That's what that's what's uh, what's that all about? You got it on the right way. You, you should wear a, a jaunty side angle. That's it. That's it. Yeah, but I'm in my 40s, it don't look right and it don't feel right. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? But the, wearing that hat, I'm no uh, Daniel, Daniel Croaks there again. Good evening, everyone. Oh, his numbers disappeared though. Oh, oh, what a shame. <laughs> uh, Skullfish evening, everyone. Andrew Callis, hi, gang. Hope everyone is well and fine Friday. Uh, Goda there saying hi, all. Uh, Dow Masters, did Paul say he had chaff? What? Uh, have, you had, have you had much chaff recently, Paul? <laughs> uh, Steve thinks I've gone to dress myself properly. No, oh, no. I've had a couple I mean, of drinks. There's, there's only one solution. There's only one thing that's going to happen else in having a few more drinks. It's probably either less clothes less, or less them clothes, looking yeah. Yeah. Le less smart. <laughs> less smart? How's yeah, that going to happen? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, it looks I could, like a I could, attempt to, I, I could attempt to undo a button. I could probably spill some drink on it. Oh, food. Oh, I've got oh. food. I mean, I've got crumbs going on. You know what? I'd be good for entertainment. What's that? Have you got a tie? <laughs> Do you know what? I haven't. I've got Toby's tie. I'd go and put it on. But I haven't got a pod, I, I can't see Tim tie a tie. Oh, no, I can't do that. Exactly. Oh, yeah. I'll put it around my neck. I can, put it, I, can, I can wear it like a bandana. Well, I do <laughs> like Dan, so I don't really want to ban him. Uh, Gaz Wilcox, good evening, everyone. Oh, <clears throat> Naked Tony Modeler, evening, everyone. Oh, Tony. Oh, yeah, your reprobates from Sergeant Bones. Uh, Steve's saying, what's my day job? I uh, fit car stereos. <laughs> hang and, on, uh, hang on. It, and it, breaks expensive, it breaks expensive cars. Don't listen to it. expensive him. cars. I didn't also fix expensive cars. Um, <laughs> and I definitely, nothing ever catches fire. <laughs> I'm nearly drowning. <laughs> Nothing's ever caught fire. Nothing's ever caught fire. Nothing's Move ever caught fire. <laughs> anything directly to do with me, I'm lucky enough. Uh, Auntie's there saying hello. hello. Patrick McGeever saying evening. Bonjour. Uh, Mike Wilson, good evening to, uh, to the Monty Python crew of modelling. Ah, I think that's back. quite a good uh, name for us. I think that's quite a good that, likeness. That is, quite, that is quite a good name, actually. Yeah. Um, Jim, think... can, you do a, can you do a proper Windsor knot? Double Windsor, double Windsor, come on. I think Luke's going to be the crazy wizard that doesn't let people across the bridge, though. What's up? <laughs> What's he <laughs> <even> about? <laughs> He's gone wrong. Right, hang on, hang on, let's break this down. Tim, what? What's Monty Python. <laughs> Monty Python. In the search for the Holy Grail, they yeah. goes across the bridge and there's the crazy wizard that doesn't let them across the bid. Now... Luke's the only one with a beard, so it's naturally down to Luke to become okay, the uh, person from the films. That makes sense. Yep. Where did they come from? What? <laughs> I I don't, no, you just, I, I wasn't quite concentrating. I was replying to no, him. So <laughs> Mike, Mike Wilson said, good, "Yeah, Mike Wilson oh. said good evening to the Monty Python crew of modelling." Got you. I yeah. see. Now we're not that funny. <laughs> <laughs> He's not oh. the Messiah. The very naughty boy. <laughs> Hey. Got you now. Any women out here? <laughs> no, uh, <coughs> no, 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 Um, uh, evening all from Hey Mika. Mark's there saying, the Evening, peeps. Shadow Land Scale mod models, good evening all. Darrell Master says, Old Gusset Tim. Yeah. A bit rude there, McDowell. Mm, not that Strange old. Strange drink. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Gary Pash is there, evening crew and chat. Said, More than all day. Andrew Callis, oh, jumped again on me. Where'd he go? Uh, uh, Andrew Callis, we need to start a silly modeler society. We've already got one. Don't need to start one, we've already got one going. Uh, Yari T saying hi to all. Pat's place, hello, modelers. Hello, Pat. With a couple of sparklers, that old lady, 
Um, someone waving and uh, some saying Sam needs... Have thumb. you just insulted a whole nation by calling the Statue of Liberty a whole, an old lady? Well, yeah, probably. Let me go and have a look. No I do apologise if he has. I've got a feeling, yeah, he did. He's called the Statue of Liberty an old lady. <laughs> what? She's an old lady with a torch. It's like the old lady that comes out shouting at you because you peed in their bushes. Please. <laughs> uh, That's what they were doing last night. They were looking for a car. Yeah, Tim, Tim's turned into a prowler now. Yeah. Again. <laughs> Unbelievable. Well, it was that last night, Tim. Uh, <sighs> I reckon he was looking for car parks and he got lost. (laughs) (laughs) What's that for the walk? Toby, Toby, I'll show you something, son. Come watch this. (laughs) (laughs) What? Don't just stand over there. I'll be back in a minute. (laughs) (laughs) Distract them. Distract them. Uh, Andrew was saying, yeah, Jim's feed is highlighted in green for me. Lucky Jim. Um, Simon Reed, good evening, everyone. Full house tonight. Uh, Simon Brown, evening or I'm busy polishing my helmet tonight. Oh, oh my! Uh, Stay away from it. And he's also working on his F1 model. Nice. (laughs) Keith Curter, good. I have one from Placerville, California. Placerville. Hello. Placerville. Don't know. It's on my one. I could have have said it right the first time, but probably didn't. Uh, Stuart says, saying, hi, gang. Hope you're all keeping well. Literally arrives home from work. Oh. Uh, Alan Parker, evening, guys. Oh. Auntie saying, oh. tried oh, some rattle cans today for the first time in a long time. Uh, primed, let dry for a couple of hours and painted with gloss aluminium. And the paint oh, started bubbling. Time for some uh, paint stripper. Let your primer dry longer. Don't put your silver on too thick. Yeah, light coats, dust, dust, dust. 12 dust. hours, standard answer is our well knows. And if you're not sure, 24. Yep. The good rule dust. to follow. Yep. Bit of dust. Bit of dust. dust. Uh, Jeffrey Holmes, and evening all. Uh, Carlos is there saying great, greetings from Venezuela. Oh, nice to have someone from, from uh, the southern part of the world. <coughs> uh, Daryl saying Tim Rambo, I bet. Go get the tie, Tim. Mm-hmm. I might have something better than the tie. I'll have a little look at this. Looking. <laughs> Luke Ward saying, I'm no wizard. Not you, Luke. The other week. <laughs> um, look at someone saying, Look, uh, Andrew's saying, Andrew Kelly saying, Looking smart there, Jim. Uh, oh, crayons there. Evening, gentlemen. Hope all is well. Hey, crayons. What is your quest? Uh, I miss Benny Hills as the white of the Northern Star. Yeah, the Knights in Knee. Uh, Brian Moran, hi guys, hope everyone is well. Uh, Dean Slater, evening all from a cold and soggy Midlands. What a difference a week makes. Yeah. Uh, Ian's there saying evening everyone. Not a lot of modelling done this week, but watched a lot of YouTube videos. Well, you've at least had some good news there, Ian. Yeah, as long as you're on the uphill slope now. Not yeah, the exactly. Yeah, really good. Uh, Dwight's been working on his Revel uh, Mercedes SLS. Sunshine mm. Cooper. Hello, everyone. Uh, hello, everyone. The Queen Sunshine is here. Uh, good morning from the Philippines. Nice. Big, big delight. Oh, that's enough to pack. Yeah. Um, let the sand of the work. Good. And we're pretty much cool. Up there. Cool. Well done. Remember last week I had a spammer asking me to suck his thing? Yeah. Oh, I, had one, I had one again the other day. He messaged me going, hello, how are you? And I sent back, not bad, how's your, jet, your deck chair? And I got, it's fine, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> but that's nice. it, that's all you get. I get nothing else. <laughs> I, don't, I don't get why they message me. It's really weird, but it just makes me laugh. You send utter gibberish <laughs> back and they still answer you. <laughs> is it going anywhere? Is the uncollected fund somewhere you're trying to sell me, or what? I've got ten million pound in a bank, and I've I've just got to send you five grand to get it out. I've got no idea what's going on with the mad. That one oh, last yeah. week was very strange. Uh, he was definitely up for it. <clears throat> it was well for it. Never know. He could have rocked your world. Yep. Uh, <laughs> we'll see. We've got no singing to do this week, have we? Hey, we've got no singing to do this week. Good, have we? No, 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 we haven't got any. 
Got oh. none this month, mate. No, no, oh no, we have. Fine. We've got David. Oh yes, David's coming. Oh. Yep. The twenty second, doesn't he? Uh, Something like that. Oh no, uh, we're going to bed. Oh. Uh, <laughs> and I got him on the seventeenth or the twenty fourth. But then again, he's only complaining about the heat he's sitting in. Yeah. <laughs> I did say sitting. Are you sure? No. Weird. <laughs> Some people are really weird in this hobby. Very strange people. Let go. <laughs> Corona. Yep. <laughs> Can't mention that. It's looking more of a grey and windy and wet outside. Yep. Looking more like an autumn evening than a. Is it looking more like the weather, moment? Tim? Is it? Hey, what? Is it looking more like the weather? It's definitely yeah. looking more summery for England, is what it's looking. It, it, it's definitely looking like the further end of the year. It's like the 34th week, two weeks away from the end. <laughs> two weeks That's it. Don't want to get confused with the days and the months, do we? <laughs> um. <laughs> uh, oh, dear. Where did you get up to on the chat? Oh, there you are there. What you, oh. Sunshine says, how are we all doing? Yeah. All right, yeah. Um, Mike says, and hi, Paul and Jens from the USA. Hello, mate. Hello. Alan Farmer says, evening, lads and ladies. Keith getting to load pictures progress. Is HNS Ultra with uh, Seth Kane. Nozzle the two mil neither caps. I couldn't use the big nozzle. Well, that's not good. Uh, Mark says, evening, everyone. He's run late. We're doing housework. All done now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm only joking. In. Uh, Anti Zersi, yeah, trying to experiment with drive more quicker this weather. Obviously, not always lead time in no rush. Uh, Dry says, I think next year there's a major model in railway, road, railroad, road rail. The hell in Yorkshire. I hope it could be there and buy some from Paul. I'm sure there'll be a Paul there somewhere selling stuff. <laughs> Will be me though, buddy. Uh, uh, Sam Reese says, How's the tornado going, Jim? <coughs> He's blown away by uh, fireworks. Uh, were involved. Yeah. Kira says hot and humid in Ottawa. Luke Ward says me and the missus are going to oh. get a dog. We're discussing names now down to Wayne or Gary. Any suggestions? To bias that's, that's to Williger. To Williger. That's the one. To Williger. To Williger. Call it basket and confuse it. Confuse if it. I also own a dog. I'd call it. Get dog. the basket. 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 <laughs> I'd, I'd just call it dog. <laughs> we know you would. Yeah, you would. Only so you could dominate it. <laughs> well, if, I, if I only had one cat, I'd call it cat. But I can't have all cats called cat. Uh, There's no chat saying hi, everyone. Tony Davis says, oh, good evening, oh, all. Oh. Still not used to this time. He's gone religious. Peter Seagrove says, evening, all. Pat's Place says, F1 is back on the track. So is Moto GP as well, by the look of it. Yep. Didn't even watch it today. Uh, oh, Michael yeah. Mitchell says, luckily for him, he's off work today. I don't think it's on yet. Not okay. This, this week, F1's this week coming, isn't it? Tim, you definitely need to put a tie on. You look like the little bloke out of ACDC. I said this last week. Hang on. <laughs> He's got shorts on. Uh, oh, Angus Young, yeah. R Rudiger, mate. Rudiger, yeah. Rudiger's a great name. I think our Jack Russell thinks his name. Get off the couch and stop licking your balls. <laughs> 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 oh, I nearly swore then. Oh, feel free. No, because we're not that rich a minute. No. Right, really? then, what should we do first? Do we mix it up? Ooh. How many viewers we got? 90. Whoa. Let's do the giveaway. Let's screw them all up and then come on early. Yeah. <laughs> right, we're going to give away a £20 UMP gift voucher. All you've got to do is when you see ooh, 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 Dan post in the chat, start your numbers now. The Tim, when you see Tim posting in your chat, start numbers now. Uh, oh, yeah. If you pick one number from one to a thousand, you get five minutes, as you can see by Norman's screen. I'm going to just lost all my screens now. There we go. Um, oh, God, you can't turn it off, can you? It's well annoying. I hate this. You can't get it off the screen share, can you, back to your own screen? 
No. Really annoying. Really annoying. Well, it's gone. No, um, no. So you get five minutes to pick one number from one to a thousand. Um, after five minutes, we close it. We do a random number generation. The closest person to it wins. You're too late. Too early, Daryl. Jump on the gun. Jump on the gun. Uh, do a random number generation. The closest person to it wins at twenty pound UMP gift voucher. You ready, Tim? Yeah. Can't even see where you are. You vanished now. I'm over here. Is your camera off? Yeah, no. Oh, that's why. I've got the tie on. Ah. When are you ready, boys? Ready, Tim? Yep. And we'll begin in three, two, one. Start your numbers. Right. Uh, Kev says, is he allowed to open his T55 now? Is the embargo lifted? Yeah, it was, you start today, mate. Yeah, it starts today. Yeah. Yeah, should have put a po- I should have put a post up. I completely forgot. Oh, your bow's in the chat. Doesn't say hello. We'll put a number in. Hello, your bow's here. Oh. We, should we number shame people? So yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Go on, Dan. Yeah. Definitely. There's loads, that need, there's loads that need putting in that are hidden. Naked modeler. He's not said I, but he's put a number in. Oh, that's he. That's Tony all over there, isn't he? Yeah, he's he's terrible. He's probably sat there vaping, <sighs> making loads of noise. Yeah, getting blamed for stuff. <laughs> So if we got in there, let's have a little look. Oh, Yari's in there. I think Yari said hello there, bro. I might have missed him before. Jeff said hello, Jeff. Hope you're all right. Uh, John Shadowlands there. Hello, John. Uh, Skullfish Jace. Hello, Jason. Hope you're all right. Jacqueline Stevens is there. Hello. Uh, Roger Brooks. Hello. Hey, Mika. Hello. I'm waving. No one can see me. <laughs> <laughs> Just you, though. Wave, Paul. Wave. Uh, Yuval's in there. Hello. Gary's there as well. Uh, hello. Hello, hello. Uh, what else we got? Let's have a look. John Howell, hello. I mean, you might have already read your names, but I haven't seen you, so I'm just saying hello to you if I haven't. Stuart say he said hello before. Uh, Gaz Tops is there. Mark say hello, Mark. And there we go. Really wish you could cancel the screen share thing. Yeah, it's a bit weird. It's you really connect, annoying. You can exit the full screen. But I, I, I can see all our screens. Yeah, I can. So I, can but it, I can see it in the small grid. Yeah. You can zoom in and make them bigger. How? You just, just drag and drag the little bottom corner and drag it out. Make them bigger. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I suppose that'll do for now, isn't it? Yeah. You got your tie on? Yep. Yeah. Wow. Can't quite see. That doesn't look particularly right. Is that a belt, isn't it? <laughs> it you might cry. be. <laughs> oh my <laughs> life! Uh, oh, it, eh? Yeah, belt up. There's a joke out going nowhere near it. <laughs> yeah. Oh, all of a sudden, Tim's got a uh, uh, an in excess moment. Oh, in- I knew you'd say it. <laughs> you belt up in there. Belt up in there, will you? <laughs> it does, it does, you're right, Raoul, Daryl. It does uh, they're a bit kinky, I'll be honest. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's got kink in it. See. Oh. Two minutes, folks. you got two minutes. Oh, dear. Did you share the link to I sent him from the live page? No, you, did, you t- didn't remember me, too. I, th- I thought you'd done it automatically. <laughs> well, I was rather busy <laughs> laughing at something. <laughs> do you want me to do it now for you? Please. Will do. Thank you. Uh, Malcolm's in there as well. I, I didn't know if you said or not, Jace. It wasn't that. It's not. I didn't see you earlier on, that's all. So I'm just saying all those people that I must have missed when I was... I get distracted at the beginning because people start messaging me and send me all sorts of stuff. Like, he's live! I'll message him now. <laughs> so I always get distracted. That's why Tim started reading the chat because I get screwed every two minutes. So yeah, I'm, not, uh, I'm mucking around. So, yeah, hello, Jay. Hope you're keeping well. Ah, okay. One uh, minute, folks. Just over one minute. Tam says, "Hello, oh, Tam. Hope you're keeping well." Simon Johnson, hello. Anthony Clemens, hello. Ride the winds there. Hello, Mountaineer Modeler, hello.
How long have we got left? 30 seconds. You have 30, 30 seconds. seconds. There we go. There we go. I haven't even got, a, I haven't even got the number generator ready. Wow. What was that off? Okay. Uh, Tim Show. It definitely wasn't Countdown. <laughs> definitely wasn't. You ready, Tim? Getting there. And we'll begin in three, two, one. We begin. Stop your numbers. Stop, right, stop, stop screen sharing. There we go. That's better. There you go. It's one thing I don't like about this thing. That screen sharing's annoying. Yeah, you see, Kev's got a good thing. More numbers entered than likes click. Oh, Claire's close again. Very close to missing out. Very, very close. So close to clear. Very close. Oh, let me get sorted here. Got my pen and my pencil. Oh, got my pencil and my bit of paper ready. Come on, Tinternet. Very slow tonight. Interweb. All right, so Edmund Steenberg used out. Okay, everything's gone really slow. There we are. So that should be sharing, correct? Yes. 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 So ignore the two that was already there. I'm going to put a thousand in there. Um, so we're going to click this once and once only. That will be the winning number. As always, if two people pick the same number, the first person who picked it wins. And uh, as always, if you think there's one, please don't shout out in the chat because we've had the wrong name shouted out before. These guys will check it, want to know the winner. Um, Tim will announce it for us. Pick the number. Again. So the winning number, good luck for the twenty pound UB gift voucher is eight seven three. The number that is drawn of the numbers that we may found from numbers. the number generator. From the numbers. Of the numbers. In the numbers. So has anybody started the T fifty five yet? I would have had it. Yes. I, I looked at the box about ten minutes ago. I've uh, literally a couple of weeks. Hour. Excellent, mate. My Charlie's nearly done. It's got a few mud effects to splatter all over it tomorrow. Mm. It's not whitewashed, Dan. Screw <laughs> up. <laughs> yeah, the weathering is a bit OTT. I had a bit of a screw up with some paint. Not impressed, but I think I pulled it back for the most part. <laughs> but... What happened? Or is that in the yeah, I used a life color dust effect and it went not good. Oh, really? Oh, I caught it all on camera. Don't worry. You can have a laugh. <laughs> you wouldn't do that. Oh, it's all going in the video. Um, yeah, it looked awful, all of the model. Just, I don't know what happened. Just oh. looked terrible. So I had to sit and take it all off with the remover. Right. But it didn't all come off. And then where the UP wash went, it stuck like shit to a blanket. As yeah. it does on Mac coats, if you know how to use them properly. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I wanted a dusty tank. I now have a very, very dusty tank. Yeah. But I had to hit it with water, clots, everything. And I think I've got it all right. I think it's it's all right. It's passable. <sighs> we'll see. It is what it is. Nothing I can do about it now. So life color, effect sets, suck. Rust one's good. No, the others, yeah. Sticking to the way I normally do it now. Let's get the chat back, eh? Where are we? Excellent, Tam. Good to see you keeping well. Um, Sound Farm is looking for a good book on the development of B24 and one of the B25. Do you have any recommendations? On with words. Koderman's in there. Saying good evening, gentlemen. There's numbers too late. Possibly. 100%. <laughs> Name's Hank. 
<laughs> cool. All right, so it looks like we have got a wiener. Well, you might have. <laughs> what, what have you got then, Dan? It, it's I Dan Dan, uh, t- Tim's Dan's our auto asphyxiation, is it? <laughs> <laughs> is it? Is it that? I can't remember what it's called now. Is that right? <sighs> yeah, it's, it's close. Yeah. Nearly there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure what about, we're talking about. about, about I'm I'm Nick asking about. Trish to punch him in the face. <laughs> <laughs> I, thought it the, I thought it was more punching in the balls was what that went along with. But, uh, Kick him on, on, Trish. Kick him on. <laughs> I was going to say that you punch Trish where you want. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh. <laughs> anyway, get right. ready for a drink. Moving anyway, on. Anyway, let's move on. Moving along and stop being so disgusting. <laughs> Mine in the gutter, you lot, I tell you. Uh, so you know the numbers from the numbers that were drawn from the numbers, the number of <laughs> number eight, number seven, and number three of in an order that made a number of 873 was what the number Paul managed to draw. So the, per- the closest person in the numbers that drew the number was Ian Dalfrate with a number 863. Oh, oh well done, Ian. Well done, Ian. Golf clap well done, man. Well done, Ian. Well done, Ian. Um, message me, mate, and I'll sort that out for you. Email address, and I will get that sorted out for you. Post haste. Well done. Um, stick around. We've still got a £10 UP gift voucher to give away for the build of the week, uh, which is in Dan's section in a bit. Uh, we've still got Al doing the questions for the crew. And right now, if Tim wants to do it, Tim can do what we've been buying. Yeah, it's probably Ooh. why he does it early on. <laughs> Yeah, good point. Yeah. What do you mean by that? I'm not doing it this way no more. I'm not doing the lights anymore. I'm running off. I love you. You're like, you're like you're picking on me. I need to go back and get that. I, I, I want that little rant as a ringtone. Yeah. <laughs> that would be so funny. Oh, no. so, yeah, Tim's gonna look all the work, uh, work, all the stuff you've been buying this week. Hey, mate, we're, we're all right. We've got new Facebook, so I'm having them. Just work I haven't got it yet. Oh, I've got it fully. It well, actually, not, 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 not on a proper itself. account, anyway. It, it actually updated itself <laughs> the other day to uh, maybe I don't know. Um, right. welcome to Ramblings by Tim. Sharing. Ta-da. Ta-da. See, look, this is all look managed group. Yeah, no, my normal ones aren't like that yet. Yeah, no, it's a bit. Like I've got, I've got to get used to it. We haven't got the recommendations down the side, which is a real shame. Because they were good fun seeing what the other random things they'd tell me to. Yeah, do. fake taxi for months on end. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, my son-in-law, my son-in-law. I knew that were coming up. <laughs> 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 we got, got so excited now, look. Uh, so starting off with Mr. Al, he bought himself a tank. Hey! Oh, hey! Nice one, Al. Oh, uh, he got like that, Al. The Polish production C55. Do you know, you worked out which scheme you're going for yet? That one I'm showing there, the winter camo that one. one. Mm-hmm. Now, we've all heard Al raging at things that take forever to build. Oh. He's bought a mini art kit. And he's got a bought a mini art kit. <laughs> oh. He's brave. He's, he, lo- he, lo- he bought them. He built the mini uh, the kissy hall. So he's up for a challenge. The kitty oh, hall oh, have over a thousand pieces. No, no, but it had it had several that didn't fit together very well. So <laughs> hang, hang on, hang on. This will too. <laughs> <laughs> it is yeah. mini hot at the end of the day. That ain't no yeah. Tammy kit. Nope. That's gonna, yeah. Good luck, Al. And he's got rules. Fair play to you, mate. Yeah, oh, good for you. Yeah, he's done all that. In for a pan, in for a penny, in for a buck. Yeah. Go hard yeah. or go home. Go, yeah, go. Yeah, that's who. Or go home <laughs> and go hard. <laughs> go <laughs> next door. Me, I, I'm not even gonna say that. Um, oh, Rusty, it's Rusty Zimmer frame. Rusty Zimmer frame's been uh, got himself the Dashworks Panther. Nice. Got, oh. Very nice. Nice shot. Comes with interior, but does it come with the Zimmer? It, eh? I don't know. Without interior. Yeah, without. Oh, without interior. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> You've got to love Tim and his Timisms, haven't you? Oh, Loosen course. the belt a bit. I was just going to say. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> just gonna say 
lack of uh, oxygen to me um, head. Yeah. Uh, Do you think this is showing off now? I've only got four bottles of paint. <laughs> <laughs> you have a paint? Richie's, Richie Land stopped up. I'm, I'm still going to say possibly amateur. Yeah. Come on. <clears throat> Come on, Richie. Come on. It's right in three weeks' time. We see a poster. This humble slush rugby model. What's going on? <laughs> no, it's, no, it's Moscow. So it will be. He opens it three weeks later and goes, It's all gone off. It's gone off. It's like a rubber in a bottle. Yeah, oh, best idea is never open this and only ever open it once and expect to use it once. Is the uh, yep. <laughs> one shot deal that, innit? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah the the Mr. Hobby Solar is so much better. Yeah, even. We, we, yeah, we, they, they go off eventually. Just keep the bottles yeah. sealed. Don't leave them open. Yeah, as so, soon as you open them, that's it. They've had air in there, and they start to start going off. Hey, there was probably it. air in there before that as well. <laughs> oh, hang on, Darren Roberts comments on the poster phone on lamp lovers, Tim. Oh, cool. <laughs> nice. <laughs> that's what what time, post Tim. would that be, Tim? The, yes, I don't Tim. know what that is. Tim, what would you get to share that post? But, but by the way, what what is lamp lovers? I'm, all I'm saying is we're not going to go look at that one, okay? Why not? <laughs> Where is it, Tim? It's as bad as Dan, is what I'm saying. He also <laughs> takes off some UMP stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Have you noticed how quick he's changed something? <laughs> he got look. He got himself a pin vice. He got himself some chewies, and he got himself the uh, nozzles. And then, anyway, enough of that. Back to back to <laughs> back to I love lamp, Dan. Yeah, I know what you like. <laughs> <laughs> He got himself some bending plies. Nice. Very nice, very nice. Uh, Mr. Scattergood. Oh, that would be nice. Got himself the T55. That will be, 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 be a good build, that, mate. Be I, nice. Weirdly, I've ended up with a tank, yeah. Yeah, very strange. Very I'm strange never going to do a tank again. I don't like them. Oh. Hang on. I can't, I can't just be not the only one. To me, all my mates, I can't be the only one not doing it, so... I thought well, I'd take. He also he got himself a mini anvil for the bench to go with his mini hammer. Yep. Is that, is that oh, what you're is. calling it now? No, that's what it is actually. Uh, an anvil. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. <Whoosh. laughs> yeah. Right over his head. Yeah. Hey, anyway, thanks to Matthew for his little uh, anvil to go with Dan's little hammer. <laughs> so is that ra is that one flat disc then? Is it? Or is it yeah, rounded or what? I can't really tell from that picture. It's a big piece of metal with a big piece of rubber underneath and you can smack it really hard, look. <laughs> was that your hammer no. smacking it then, was it? No. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it, sounded, it didn't sound like a hammer, I'll be honest. No, it didn't, no. no. <laughs> um, Barry bought himself a lot of Model Master. Oh. From Hobby Lobby. Picked up all, thank goodness for their forty percent off coupons. I'm amazed this company ever makes any money from Hobby Lobby. This I'm going to say this is always having a sale with a forty percent coupon. Forty percent sale? How do they make any money? Even that, that must mean their prices are that high. They yeah, still exactly. make money on forty percent. Yeah, oh. gotta be. Yeah, uh, lots of paints and model master down there, and that's some more lacquer metalizer. Ooh. Like a lacquer. Holy DNA keyboard, Batman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <we're not> <laughs> that. Let's, let's have a good zoom in on those. Oh. 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 Wow. I'll just, oh. I'll just wipe over the top of the keys. No one will notice. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. Yeah, let, let, let's do. Barry, before you take pictures again, let's, let's clean the keyboard. Let's clean the keyboard. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> don't, um. don't, don't get a dark light in his room. <laughs> 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 you mean a UV light, Tim? Hey? You mean a UV light? Yeah, dark light. <laughs> yeah. The same thing. Quickly, quickly run away. For once, oh. Tim's actually right. I think they all call dark lights. Yeah. yeah. Well. Ta da! <laughs> anyway. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, Phil Spurious had spending my hobby, uh, my birthday money. Before I have it, I've done that oh, many times. Well. Best way, that's the best way. Yep. Uh, BV206S right. Bang Wagon. Oh, sorry, Band Wagon. Oh. <laughs> oh, it's a Bang Baden. Um, 
eight, an eight panther full of full interior kit. That's a lot of building nice very nice. Very boss. And the yeah. mark male, male, female, not too sure which one it is yet. Mark cool. four. Mark four, indeed it is. It's got a two in one. Yeah. With a male and a female. That's interesting. Can you do either or can you? Hey? Well, I thought that'd have to be male, male, female for two in one, but <coughs> male, male, female, male. <laughs> that could yeah. so go downhill very quickly. It just did. That's done. <laughs> anyway, oh, I uh, missed all the words. That's cool. On second, yes. uh, Darren Scam Waddle's birthday present for myself. Plus, must have been one of their birthdays from buying themselves. I know. So, not fair. Not fair. The dash work fawn. At Furt Fawn, and from my beautiful lady, enough resin and silicon mold ingredients to have a go at molding. Oh, very Ooh. cool. So he got himself the fawn, very cool, and enough, st enough stuff to make to uh, mold. What's going on with Facebook because you zoomed in. Oh, and, oh, it's all gone <laughs> great. Why are you over here for? I want to press refresh, but I'm worried. Ah, do it. Oh, well, what will show up? <laughs> <laughs> let's go for it. Let's 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 flip the biscuit. Let's play Russian roulette with Tim's Mac. Yeah, I need to go find that post Tim Blight and go comment on so it pops up. <laughs> Tag Tim. It? It, it'd be it'd be hard to find which one it is. Um, it won't I be. Say, I bet I could find it, Tim. Yeah, I bet you could. Anyway, Darren, uh, yeah, Darren got himself some mold making silicons. Very nice. Uh, Darren Masters got himself the tier and five. Cool nice. looking tank. <coughs> oh, nice. Uh, the uh, Sheridan, another That's a cool apex. Cool look at that. Or an apex. Uh, oh, some damn, cleaner and some uh, cleaners, some thinny, very thin. Azu tape. Azu, that's the word. Thank you. Azu <laughs> and then tape. Just went out. No, that, 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 yeah, there's Tammy, that one. Yeah, sorry. Just to me, that one. That's Azu. And lots of Chewies there. Hey. And, uh, yeah, you got, you got a few Haribos because they have multiple orders. Oh, okay. Cool, cool. Fair enough. Get rewarded for multiple. Uh, oh, and he got himself the air, an airbrush holder as well. Never got along with that. Probably. There was fall, there was fall out the top of Yeah, I couldn't get on with it. Because there's not enough weight. Now, I always found there's not enough weight forward for it to be like this very um, safely. I prefer this type. I prefer the UMP ones. I prefer the UMP ones. And they fit better. I'm only joking. Like, they always fell out the top of mine on that one. Oh, hang on. Everyone tilt your head. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yeah. Sure. Have a bass. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Al. Don't be mean. It's four Al. That's really nice, like. just, just lie down on the floor, Al. It'll be okay. Um, Steve Parks has got a shot. Not sure about the motorbike and cycle. There's only one little sprue in the box. Well, I'm not going to be rude, but in a, a 148 German motorcycle and cycle, I'm surprised there's even one sprue. Yeah, I'm going to be. I'm going to be honest. They've done well getting a tree in there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to. Um, I'm going to shameless plug, Steve. Build series starting next week on my channel of that SAS Jeep. Yeah, <laughs> that. I built this when I must have been probably about 12. I remember building this on a holiday. It was I last year. All the stuff with me and went down <laughs> and built that on holiday. It's a cracking little kit. That's a really nice little one. What's been knocking on a bit now, isn't that? Yes. That is. 1970 mold. I was going to say that's probably for the same isn't it? Great little kit, though. Absolutely they twin cool. brands on the front. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, you also get a helmet. With uh, some yeah. visors on it. Excellent. Very nice. Nice strap on helmet. Very nice. A uh, couple more phantoms for Simon, and lots of MRP and an apex, and mm. oh, a holder with Ooh. little numbers on. on the front. He stuck, oh. he stuck his own numbers on there. What, 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 what are you putting in there, Steve? What have you labelled? That's interesting. Yeah, I wonder what's in there. Ooh. I wonder if that's the uh, sanding sticks because they're the colours, I think. Maybe. Could be. Maybe. Could be. Could be. Could be. Uh, oh, hang oh, on. Alan's been busy. Got himself some, uh, bought himself some cars. Got he's brought Z. I, I wonder where he's bought them, brought them from. Uh, I'm going to go with um, King Kit. That's what, what I'm going for. The, the Alpha, the Bosch ones from King Kit, because I put them onto it. Uh, he got the, uh, the, the red Alfa Romeo 
He got a LaFerrari. He got the BMW GT3. I like the look of this. Yeah, I got one of them. Great one BMW. My secret Santa got me one of them. The Bosch Alfa Romeo and the Jaguar XJR. Hey, great looking little car, that one. Very nice. Uh, Luke got himself the Tamiya logo. Oh. From yes. Mr. Dan. Oh. Dan. Uh, if anyone would like any 3D parts printed, Dan is the man. Yeah, maybe. Uh, Chernobyl number two, firefighters. That's cool. Good looking kit. I like do you that. get the same? Do you get the background like you did on the other one? Yeah, same as the first one, mate. Yeah. Very nice idea. That's, I, I think that looks better, uh, like a little diorama. I think than the other one with the. Well, the, you get a background in there. You yeah. get all. You get, get a base, and then you get so essentially the box art. You get that as like a three-sided All right. backdrop. Pretty good idea. Yeah. Which I may use. I, I I did a review of the first one on my channel. Um, but the base is just <laughs> printed. So what I'm going to do when I eventually do them, I'll do the base like a proper diorama and just use the printed one as like a template. Yeah. But I may use, because once they go on the shelf in the cabinet, with that backdrop round it, yeah, that'd be nice. It might look quite nice. I would say yeah. it's a great. I, I really like the ice, the idea from ICM to actually include this backdrop with it as it is a di little diorama. Really yeah. good idea for them. Very nice indeed. <coughs> uh, and you've got the boxer. Yes. The, a GTK boxer. Cool. Very nice. Is that their own stuff? That one, or is that a re rebox? No, it's their own. Man. Cool. So, uh, I mean, to be fair, is they're the only ones that do it. Yep. Um, it doesn't look. It's not to me a kit, but it doesn't look bad. Oh, that's fine. They're not. They're not usually good up to that. Um, Kevin Marshall just ordered direct from the UMP Manor, and in perfect time for the start of the group build is the Tamiya One Forty Eight T Fifty Five to start off another fantastic bit of service from the team. Yeah, yeah it'd be a nice great kit. That. That's brand new house, brand spanking new out. It'd be very, very good. Yeah, their 48 kits are really good, aren't they? Oh, they're amazing. That would, that would have been my second ah. choice. I get one. Ah. Yeah, it also got a thinner cleaner, some <laughs> chewies, and some paint. Adam went all nuts and got himself the uh, 112 Calsonic Skyline GTR. Oh, uh, nice. very nice. I know he want, he's been wanting that one for quite a while, that one. Uh, he's still not having no shoes this month. Uh, <laughs> for some strange reason, he went and bought a Hella kit. Uh-oh. Apparently it's rare. I, they I are getting hard to find now. Really? Mainly because they're terrible. Yeah. <laughs> so, fair play, Captain. Oh, uh, hang on, hang on. Here's good news. The kit is complete. So, he's lucky. Yeah, you do. You get your glues and paints, I think. Oh, okay. I think Adam's lost you his. You get all the parts, but you get some extra stuff. Uh, he got some SK decals for the Audi for his Security Core Amiga, and then a carbon fibre pattern for the Aventadors and Harukans, rec the recent type of uh, composite weave that they have. And he got the 3D printed um, panels for yeah. his yak. Oh, yakety yak. Oh, yeah. what, what was that? Go back to that. Click on them again. They're 3D printed. They're like, yeah, but they're 3D yeah. printed. Wow. Okay. Yeah. No, I'm trying to figure out what they actually are. They're like they're, um, they're, the, they're the they're the computer they're the panels. The oh, the side yeah. panels. Yeah. What are the top bits then? I he did tell me. Now I've forgotten. That was a bit um, that was confusing me. Yeah, it looks like a bit of a printed printed board, doesn't it? Yeah. I, I, he told me what they were. Now I forgot what they were. Damn. Brain of brain are gone. Sam went all a bit nuts and called himself a T3485 from oh. Oz Vista. Nice little kit, don't you? Very cool looking kit. And he got himself an old school Trumpeter T55 with the BTU55, which is the snowplow. Nice. Oh, well done. And it looks like they've just uh, mowed down uh, poor old snowman. Oh. Poor snowman. M4 rubber ducky. Can't, can't trust the boss. <laughs> there we go. That's another nation offended. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> have we ever done so far, Luke? Is that two? That's oh, two. Yeah. So moving on. Get your, get your shots ready. Moving on. 
Jeff Jeff Light got himself the Tamir 135 T62 and another Cheetah Mark 5. Also got himself the UMP Grey and Pink Primers. Oh. And some of the customizable sheets down there and some glue. Mm. Excellent. Uh, Jeff, did the Lamborghini turn up all right as well, mate? <clears throat> Jeff bought one of my built models off me a while oh, back. Oh, okay. He also got himself some frill <laughs> tracks for the Chieftain and the T54, 55, 50, and 62. Some T62 uh, Soviet Afghanistan vehicles, some P masks, some etch, a barrel, and some more glue. Oh, so he's built. Is he taking uh, Jeff? Are you taking part in our buddy uh, group build then? No, because he's got a 62. 62. Same thing, yeah, isn't it? 52. No. Yeah, that's eligible. It's on a 55 chassis. Yeah, uh-huh. all right. Hang on yeah, a minute. You you stipulations. T55s. Yeah, we said T55 chassis. Yep, that's a T62. Tier on five, 62s, Enigmas. I, we, it is in the rules. Go back and have a look. I did state yep. as long as you're on a T55 chassis, it's fine. Yep. Right, the, in the details, say that is stretched. That is it, it's the nothing. little details. You, Norman's fault. You ask Norman. I'm blaming Norman. What, Norman, <laughs> it's, it's a T. Hey, Norman, it's a T. Norman. Norman. Yeah, it's on a T55 chassis though. That's a modified T55 chassis though. That's all it is. Luke's building an Enigma. Yeah. Yeah, but the Enigma, an Enigma is a T55 modif- uh, slightly modified. What yeah. so is that? No, that's a T T fifty five chassis with a T sixty two on top. Yeah, just the top of it slightly modified. <laughs> <laughs> Why I'm going to lose it's all the, Tim, I'm it's in the fine. On. Look, it's our decision. You either like it or do one. <laughs> Tim, FIFO, 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 yeah. And, and for uh, all that know what FIFO means, FIFO. Uh, 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 it fit uh, in or fop off. Yeah. Anyway, sorry. And going back. Um, sorry, I, I did actually get sort of go back. Yeah. Right. So Jeff Light, if you do want to join in in the T fifty five build, building a T sixty two, you you can join in. Mm-hmm. I got bump those rules back up. Hang on. <laughs> uh, Richard Clements bought himself the Repsol RCV03. Oh, look, that's a cool. That's a cool RCV03. RCV03. It says there. It's 21103. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the uh, who, who's bike is it? it? Gizmo, Nismo GTR. Gizmo. Not <laughs> <laughs> safe, Tim. It's a special Japanese version. The Gizmo. Um, what's the oh scale? God. I'll be playing around the world tonight, Tim. As I say, continents, Tim will, Tim will be about vowels next. <laughs> <laughs> Very Pacific. Oh. <laughs> I like to be Pacific. It's special. Um, <laughs> to me, Mercedes Benz, SLR McLaren, the GT40, the Lotus 99, and two pack. And three packs of cap labels. Oh, I've never seen Tammy into them. Oh, oh I've never seen them before. Okay, okay. cool. Are they for the bottles, tops of the empty bottles, then, are they? Any of the bottles, mate. Ah. Okay. So you can see what they are from the draw, then, can't you? Yeah, yeah. that's quite a good idea. I've never seen Tammy sell those. Ah. What, what, what's, um, what's bottom right? <coughs> what, that? Yeah. Oh. That is maybe big bench. It says there's a bench vent down there. Okay. Um, what else we've got in the background? Oh. <laughs> Any dead keyboard? Oh, that needs a oh, wide look oh, at the screen. Oh, oh. Come on. oh my god! Oh, yeah. At least there's no reflections we don't want to see. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I've just had a flashback to Antley's trousers there. <laughs> oh, <it's, it's> <laughs> Dan, 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 at least I was in a gym suit. Wow. Ooh. <laughs> uh, so I'm sure you see the nice resin TBR badge this week. I have a couple of options in mind. Thanks, Dan. Yeah, you could have cleaned it up for him, Dan. No, I, I, I didn't want to send it without the supports because... Uh, you I, know said... what? I, quite, I quite like it. Like, I don't know. Yeah, it's cool. yeah. Now, Dan, we were talking. Why did, you, why did you print it like this and not flat? Because that one that's printed flat is pretty much the max I can get on my build plate. Whereas that one, if I do it at an angle, I can support it and make it bigger. 
Ah. Okay. Because I was just thinking, there's a lot of resin wasted there, though, isn't there? With there, are, doing... there is, but yeah. Yeah. It's what I, so I, I was wondering this. I was thinking, why didn't you just do it flat? Diamond's worth it. Uh, yeah, but it does. Yeah. It obviously yeah. the, the the flat print there. This looks a lot better print. You've raised the detail, which looks quite nice. Uh, also, the flatter one there that you see, the smaller one, uh, they do slightly warp when they are quite yeah, thin. You, so you can see it. I tried to get um, as much girth. That, uh, te uh -huh. that <laughs> technically, the flat one is is like a test print ish, like a Not blind cobbler's thumb. Yeah, <laughs> looks well done. <laughs> But it, 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 yeah, it took it took some fudging to get it to look right. If that yeah, makes yeah. sense. Paul got these. I yeah. Like uh, I bought, I bought them this week. I've had three pots of paint. I didn't even pay for them. <gasps> Shocking. <laughs> Wait to see the next one. This is even worse. Hang on. <laughs> is it some? Uh, please don't tell me. Oh, no, I thought it was about to say it's <laughs> That was. You know what? Technically, that was stolen. Oh. Please. <laughs> <laughs> A shoplifted from the local shop. <laughs> it's twelve foot that way. I checked the door. Dear me, I've got a person on the inside. Good <laughs> <laughs> let her out now and again, Paul. I'll be watching this. Oh. Uh, Claire got herself some detail sets for the Concord. Oh. Which Concord? Uh, that will be Rebel One One Forty Fourth. Perfect. Some, uh, some uh, resin for the engines. And a lot of photo there. That's we cool. Test some spoons for that one. Yeah. Damn, <laughs> son. Need some spooning. Need some spooning. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, not him. Oh. Hey, you lot. So sensitive. Um, Paul Savage. Savage. Hi, guys. First time posting. I received the Below Death's Head 2 resin kit today. It's uh, of a Marvel Comics character. It came lo loose like this. One sit scale, 15 inches tall, and got made to order via a certain auction site. Oh, okay, cool. That's what Matt would have up. I've got to say, the muscly back's very similar to mine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Skulls. For those who have like not that spoken that. to the past couple of days, did you all like that picture put in the chat the other day with the guy with the others? Yes, that yeah. Was, oh, oh, is, that, oh. is that Paul Savage, is it? No. Oh. That was bad. There you go. Oh, there you go. There, there is Death's Head. Cool. Back up. I'll share that with you. Hang on. Share about that one. <laughs> uh, and that's all done for there. Well done, Tim. Nice one, Tim. Three consonants, yeah, Shane, and... Uh, consonants? I'll have a B, P, P, please, Bob. Who's a no. favour, Tim? Go back to your Facebook page. No, it's fine. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what, what was that? I've, I've deleted that bit already. Go Gosh. back to your Facebook page, the top right where you normally click on the no, no, down. Well, no, you can go back. You can go back. I'm, I'm trying. I'm just getting used. Trying to get used to the new uh, one. I'm trying, trying to. <clears throat> like I was trying to find the most comfortable pose. Oh, what? No. Oh. I'm trying it's to find outside. Oh, the wheels came today, Sam. Oh, actually, I meant I haven't opened them yet. I thought let the plasters and the half tube pills die off a bit. <laughs> Plus, there was threats of a bandage going in yesterday. Yeah, I was I was tempted to put a dressing in for you today, but it, well, yeah. I've had everything else before. <laughs> oh, but not like this. Oh, a soggy oh, bandage. Yeah. The funny oh, thing was. Both times he sent them back and Hannah's open. <laughs> mm. <laughs> First time I was like, ah, oh, it was just stuck on the back of the parcel. I was like, what the hell's that? <laughs> oh, it's, a, it's a manky plaster off Sam's finger. <laughs> <laughs> it came off while I was packing the box. <laughs> and the plaster. Uh -huh. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> the finger in this one. Mm. Uh, should we catch up on chat? Let's have a look where we're at. Uh, oh god! Uh, yeah, everyone, congratulating in. Judy's in there saying lovely day in Lunenburg, Nova Scotia, Canada. Hello, Judy. Happy Happy Canadian Day. Yesterday. Was it Independence Day yesterday in Canada? Yeah, yeah. wasn't it? Ian says thank you, folks. Jeff Holmes has got a question for question time. Oh, yeah, I'll, I'm on it. Okay, uh, I got an answer for question time then. 
Uh, Daryl says, the, oh. says the pictures we were looking at are the pictures posted by you, the pictures of stuff you bought. Wow. Exactly. Well, uh, would it help to store paint bottles upside down to keep them from drying out? I believe oh, the Vallejo. I, I believe Vallejo store better on this side. That's what I was told. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, I, I believe Vallejo are stored in the bin. No, but they're model oh, color, all right. Oh, no. I, I believe it's better so that the pigment doesn't settle in the bottle lid, but you're keeping the lid moist. I guess it's like a <laughs> bottle of wine, isn't it? You keep the <laughs> yeah, it's just, they're just like a bottle of wine. Luke, oh, Luke's right. just choked himself. <laughs> what? what are you? What's wrong with you? <laughs> That's all. Very, very important to keep it moist. <laughs> it is. <laughs> you don't want to be. Uh, yeah, you don't want to be just lubing the uh, the yeah, ring. Generally, generally easier to do if they're on this side. Um, what, make sure you wipe your <laughs> nozzle when you're done. Give your nozzle a wipe when you're done. Keep the rim yeah. clean. Yeah. No, should we not? Should we not lube the ring so it doesn't? The moisture doesn't get in that way. Can you just do those hand actions again? <laughs> <laughs> like you slide it down and then you twist it like that, innit? Like, yeah. Look at that, that. Look at that. covered in piss. Oh, God, <laughs> um, oh, so I love this when people answer back from 20 minutes ago. I sure hope so. Oh, <laughs> so do I. <laughs> so do we. Yeah, so do well, we. So, sorry, farmer. I've lost the context. Uh, Roger Cox, careful, contest. Him. Says he's got a new jar, <laughs> top of his 40 year old badger paintbrush. I got it, airbrush. And um, when would we get an ultimate primer back in? Man, if I'd been asked, the, uh, 10 people every time I've been asked, that's this. I can't even say it. You've been asked 10 times to get it. So it'll be in soon, mate. It's on back order. Hopefully, begin the next week. Let's see how many airbrushes you got left. Let's have a look. Uh, 60 last left. week. So there's a oh, few. They're going, they're going down super fast. Uh, Michael Mitchell says, Hermaphrodite. Whatever thought you about, mate. Uh, Nigel says, need people can have any out more the size of the O-ring on the Apex airbrush, just by the paint cup on the outside of the brush. Yes, uh, we sell it on our site. I have absolutely no idea of the size, buddy. Uh, you'd have to try. 54. Get a bit. I have absolutely no idea. Sorry. Michael Mitch says, how did you get hot glue off a kit? Just picked up a kit and a few of some of these hot glue. Should peel off. Yeah. Number peels off. Yeah. Uh, farmer says, look like circuit board. That's right, I thought, actually. That's We've got a deck chair good. moment to remind mate Simon to put Warzone in the chat. <laughs> uh, Daryl says, need a slug of JD. Thanks, Paul. I, I would literally murder you all for a drink right now. Especially my damn Kraken, which is over there. So Thinking Anything out of your Kraken does not sound interesting. I, I could murder a rum. Really could. It's been too long. Anyway, uh, Jeff says, yes, the table is not open. No worries, mate. Daryl says, fit in or, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Giz Gizmo, yeah. Oh, dear, Gizmo. That could be an alternative Gremlins, couldn't it? Gizmo. <laughs> 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 uh, uh, Jeff says, you ordered the T62 for the group bill is announced, but it's permitted. It'll enter it. Yeah, it's fine, mate. It's on a T55 chassis, regardless of what Tim thinks. <laughs> Norman's in charge. Norman gets the winning vote. Norman? Yes, it's permitted. There we go. Tim? Well, as long as he says he can have it. He it, can have it. It's in the rules. Go read the post oh, of the day. I'm very rules? clear because otherwise I get people, can I do this? It can drove I past the T55 once. <laughs> <laughs> That's like a 2C. It'd be a 2 CD. Uh, <laughs> Sound Farmer says, what printer did Dan use? As an any cubic printer. Is that what you got, Dan? Yes, I've got a photon. Photon? Yeah. Uh, he's been thinking about getting a resin print for parts. Not suitable for printing PLA. There you go. Uh, it's a Daryl Shannon. Tim! Hey, but... uh, Sky Sharks there saying hi, guys, from Fayetteville, North Carolina. Oh. Sam, Sam was posting himself to you, Paul, a bit at a time. <laughs> I have to use Hermes for that then, because Raw Males doesn't like the weight. Uh -huh. uh, Rich Bondens there saying good day. I hope you're okay, Rich. Hey, 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 Rich. Hope you're feeling better, mate. Yeah. Uh, Richard Clemens in there saying, hey, guys, from Ontario, Cal uh, Canada. <laughs> Rich. Oh, I tried, Judy says, July 1st, Canada's 167th birthday. It's crazy that these countries are that young. I think it's all done. Yeah. 
Uh, Luke's 54 today. He's waiting until payday on the 20th. Really wants an apex, but he'll need to wait. Hope there's some left. How many were left, Tim? Did you look? 54. 54. Oh, I see. So he's not 54 today. <laughs> I, thought, I thought it was his birthday. <laughs> Congratulations. Everyone sing happy birthday to Luke. Happy, happy birthday to Does anyone know the diameter of the Tammy acrylic paint? His calipers are dead. He's got to buy batteries. He wants to make a military style paint. About that big. They're about that round. Yeah, about that big. <laughs> Six inches. <laughs> Two furlongs. Uh, come on, someone measure them for him. Would you want to know what size what, what is? The width of a Tamiya paint pot. Width? Yes. Mm-hmm. That's the measurement from side to side. Ah, is that the new LPs or is it the old XFs? They're the same size. I assume it would be the old because the LPs are slightly wider, aren't they? I think. Are they? 33 mil. No, not according to my calipers. No, they are. Uh, yeah. LPs, Hang on. Uh, LPs uh, are 33. No. Uh, Camp and base are different. The LPs are, on my calipers, are 35.1 millimeters. They're not. They are. No, that, that one is on my calipers, Tim. Trust me, I've got them in my hand here. Yeah. So it's 33, eh? No. 33, I've got, yeah. Oh, I don't know what you're measuring, Dan. You've been ordering stuff off Wish again, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be honest, though. Actually, you know what? If you measure the base of the jar... Yeah. Yeah. It goes, 30, it goes down to 35, so they do actually taper out a little. Yeah. If you measure the top... Top very the top edge and cap. The XF are exactly the same as the yeah. LP on my calipers. If, if, if you measure so basically, that top, we haven't got a clue. Very <laughs> top edge 33, bottom, as Dan said, 35. 35. There Somewhere you go. between 30 and 40 mil. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Happy to help. <laughs> yeah. No need to thank us. He's even more confused now than when he started. So that was 42 mil. <laughs> You know that anyway. What was it? For 35. Is it 35? 30, 35. 30, 35. Was it 30, 35, 32, 40? So they're, they're slightly <laughs> wider at the bottom than they are at the top. <laughs> oh my god. A little like myself. What? I get some fresh batteries for your calipers, mate. <laughs> yeah, good good idea. Oh, uh, Maria's there saying hi hot and muggy oh. Tenerife. Can't wait for a UP stuff to arrive. I uh, hope you have a great weekend. Cheers, aka Stevie B. Excellent. Uh, so 40 mil should be enough. Uh, uh, yeah, maybe. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, there'll be yeah. wiggle room. Who were? Wiggle. <laughs> uh, Scott's in the chat saying, What was the average unladen wing speed of a swallow? I go with Dekcha. African I'm, or I'm, European? Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> hang on, Tim's on again. Hang on, wait a minute. Uh, up a minute. Moving on. Is that... <laughs> no, 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 that's the rest of the joke. Moving on. Is this the rest of the joke? Moving on. Moving on. Jim will know. Jim knows. The joke, oh, the know. silent farmer put it in there and deleted it. I know it's still there. I'll put it in there. You can get the blame. Tim was just reading that. Although no, no, he did go not... with, uh, yeah. So, anyway. <laughs> uh, Rich, Rich is there trolling Tim. Tim, how's the bucket miner coming? <laughs> it's about as well as the wooden ship, the wing nut wings, the oh, <laughs> <miner. laughs> uh, That bucket thing is definitely staying in the cupboard where it is. Yeah, he did say bucket. <laughs> Will you just pop off? Yeah. Yeah. There we are. In peace. Right, what should we do next? I'm going to do some rust on. Oh, jeez. Oh, get the sh- <laughs> F out of me. <laughs> Not my you look outside where it's raining, do you? Moving oh, on. Bit... Oh, sh- well, I... you're back on there, Tim. You're about to do some work. Yeah, I was about to do some work, but a cat. Should we do your section then? Hey? Should we do your section then? That's a great idea. <laughs> the cat wants to go outside in the rain. Should we let, it, let him out? I don't know. Who the hell's Lorraine? There you go. <laughs> hey, who the hell's Lorraine? <laughs> oh, that's, that's, that's a girl I used to know. She oh was my! Um, 
Uh, don't start him, whatever you do. But uh, Claire's in the chat confusing Silent Farm with even more. Tell us a 23 mil. Tell me a acrylics of 40 mil. Uh, don't be out there, do you? <laughs> Is it wet outside, bit one? Yeah, good. I'm leaving that obvious joke. Yeah. Was it wet inside? No. no. Uh, I was going to talk about. What? <laughs> what? I retract my previous comment. Tim's weird. <laughs> right, so Tim, Tim's going to have a look through all the new kit releases uh, oh. over the last few weeks. Hang on, um, hopefully, we're not too late for him. Hello. <laughs> Oh, it's I'm not 11. doing it anymore this late. Oh, God, yes. <laughs> <laughs> there we go, Kino. Yeah. Oh, so Paul, I hear you're a modeling god. Damn straight I am. Damn straight he is. No, he's just doing that with my other title. What, a stuck yeah. up model? A, a stuck up modeling city next Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. It flicks it between weekly. Depends what you are, really. I haven't it? called a name for a while. <laughs> not that I know what. I don't. Let me have a think. Stand by then, and I'll just. So yeah, someone said they hated me yesterday. Ha oh. I'm sure Hannah can shout something across. Definitely. She don't think she's out there yet. She was watching Frozen with James. Probably having a bit of a late night. <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> uh, somebody told me they hated me today or yesterday. So that's that's not bad. Shows it works. Doing pretty well. Yeah. Well, I'm definitely a modelling god. Oh, well, definitely, definitely. Well, definitely. I've just got to try and hang on. Oh, oh, oh! Hang on a second. We've you reckon stuff this. again? I've got to do this because I can't see the mouse while doing that and doing that. Sorry, there. There we go. So, starting off, um, Roden are doing a one one forty four scale B thirty six B, and that is such a cool plane. Yeah, looks nice. That's hard. Very cool. Yeah, the lovely box art. Um, if, it's, if it maybe it might be a good kit, so it might be worth getting. Who knows with Roden? It can be really good, or sometimes just doesn't fit. Uh, but fantastic plane. Very cool. Very cool. Um, uh, Black uh, Black Dog have announced that they're going to be doing some stuff for the Great War Hobby F fifteen. Uh, they're doing the Vulcan gun, the engine set, and the avionics up front. You can buy each one as an individual or buy them all as one big set. So if you like your resin and like a lot of work. Yeah, like hacking your kit to it. Yeah. I was, I was saying the avionics one does look quite cool and very, very uh, busy. That's a lot of electronics to make a plane fly. Um, from uh, U model. Uh, they're going to be bringing out the Object 775 oh. Soviet Experimental Missile Tank. And a winner for the worst box art ever. Yeah, it it's, is. it's a bit... That's uh, shocking, isn't it? It's a bit busy, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. It's, a bit, it's a bit hard on the eyes. It, that's the only thing I could find of it. So it looks like it's a T-72 chassis yeah. with a upturned uh, cooking dish with a uh, drain pipe sticking out the front. Co cooking dish, you mean saucepan or frying pan? Oh, no. Do we know you model? Are they any good? Well, they do a lot of the resin 172 stuff that I've seen <coughs> now and again. Right. Um, and it looks quite good. Don't know whether it's going to be any good, though. It's going to be I, I'm going to hedge my bets on that's a terrible kit. Yeah. It'll be adult models as well. As it, what does that say? Adult models. Age 18, 18, 18 or over. over. Watch me, bit. Yeah, that's, most us, that's most of our stuff. It's um, it's a very weird tank. So it just, in theory, only fires uh anti-tank missiles. On my imagine, imagine. A bit of a weird one. Uh, racing kit have announced loads of stuff coming out. Wow, look at that, um, look at that main rotor. Wow, I know, isn't it? So they've oh, got cool. a few Huey, a couple of Huey bits. You've got the tower rotor, main rotor assembly, and then the Huey pilot seats. Uh, and they've also got a tower rotor and a main rotor coming out for the MH60L. Now, that that main rotor looks absolutely fabulous, but if it's all in resin, that's going to be delicate. Mm. Uh, interesting, that one. Yeah, Amusing Hobbies 135 Sintram Mark 5 uh, is available over at eModels, £45, €50, Euros, $56. Nice. Cool looking tank. I'll be honest, and that's cool not looking. bad. Two. 
if it, it builds up decently, it's not too badly priced as the uh, AFB club ones can be at least 55, 60 pounds. Yeah. Depending how you buy it from. So not too badly priced really in the UK. Of course, it's a tank. Uh, the Mini Art 135 T55A Croatian, which I've got coming, uh, it's oh, available at E models, £45, €50, Euros, $56 on that. Not that I'll get that far when you build it, but which camera have you picked? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't know, yeah. Probably right. the Marina, probably, with the. Uh, it's with the interesting, isn't it? Yeah. So, do you reckon that Marina will be a decal? Should be, shouldn't they? Yes, they, that's decals, red and whites are decals. Oh, you're going to throw the decals on them. Are you going to throw it up? Uh, no, I'm just going to risk it with a biscuit and uh, go for the kit tracks. Well, I've Ooh. seen the kit tracks. So is Norman. Good luck. Yeah. Okay, I might be buying some full tracks for. Honestly, yeah. Tim, there's four locator points per link. What was it? Five? Yeah, two are at the side, and there's two at the top of every link. But rather than being flush, you can just trim them and sand them quick. They overhang like the step. Of the track, oh. you can have a point each each side to sand, a point at the top, and then the the angle of the track on each side to sand. Absolute nightmare. Yeah, that sounds just pointless. I, I thought I might use the kid tracks. I had a look, and I was like, "No way, am I cleaning them up? <laughs> Take forever." All right, so that that means for all tracks being put. Yeah, something quid yeah. money well spent. Yeah. Uh, next up is now I found this company, uh, Salvino's JR Models in the US. Now he has two different ranges of kits in the second. So, as you or someone in Tim's house is tuned into the live show, yeah. <laughs> <Shut up. laughs> Cool looking cars. Oh yeah, that front one's beautiful, isn't it? Number yeah. twenty seven. They, they, they don't want, want a toe poked cat. <laughs> In the cave. <laughs> <laughs> your your option, you, you let me know. Okay. Um, yeah, so um this company called Savino's JR Models out of the US. So what he's done is he's bought up a load of the Revel moldings uh for some of the some of the older um Oh. NASCARs? NASCARs, thank you very much. Just went out of the brain then. NASCARs. Uh, what's good about them is you're getting brand spanking new decals with them. So yeah, yeah the they kit. are some of the older kits. Now, one, the kits that are 124 scale are the old Rebel kits. He's then got some 125 kits, which are his own mouldings. Um, so you, and, they, and they're all coming with brand new decals. And he's got the silver and the gold like on these decals. They look superb when I was looking through the... Uh, you see, the That's Revel cool. kits are actually okay. Yeah, not bad. You're saying the cars are terrible in them. Yeah. So the decals on these look really, really good. They yeah. do look really good. Now you can get them. Um, spot model in the U in uh, Spain have some in stock and are getting more of the different variations in stock. So we've got them over in Europe. Uh, they're ranging about forty pounds, but they were sort of like waiting to come in. So I didn't start putting any prices up yet. Uh, but in the guys in the US, he's got most, he's got pretty much most a lot of them in stock. So you can order them pretty much straight up. He's got a good range of varying different ones from the 70s to the 80s. So he's got all of the car, the actual proper cars. They're not those bodies over a space frame chassis and all that. They're proper cars. And they do look great, don't they? They do look good. Just laughing at Andy in the chat. At the risk of recommending kits, those are supposed to be pretty good. Yes, doesn't the AMT, Andy? <laughs> yeah. Andy. And Dar Daryl's asking, do full tracks with T55 fit on any kit? Uh, the normally motor uh, thingy on Tamiya kit, so you should be fine for your tier round five. So they don't, he normally uses Tamiya kits, doesn't he, as his base for them? Yeah. So you, if you're thinking of getting them, Daryl, yeah, they'd be fine for your tier round five. Assuming they're the same tracks, which I guess they are. Sorry, just... Uh... Cool though. How much are they, Tim? Do you know? Um, they look they're around about forty pounds from Ooh, uh, Spot Model. Jesus. Yeah, it, it, that's the, that's the only one problem of getting them uh, going from the states. Once you start adding the postage and stuff yeah. like that, they're still looking at about twenty five, thirty dollars, even in the states. 
I mean, by, by the time you start adding posts, that's another 15 plus you $20, depending what service they use. So you, it, you're pretty much the, the same price as what you're going to be getting out of um, Spot, ordering them direct anyway. Um, but you are getting brand spanky new decals. If you get a problem with them, you can you know you can contact them and get decals for it, which is sort of the good side of it. And they did look very, very big on it. So, yeah, if you, if you like those NASCARs, uh, there's a new new way of getting them and building some great looking little kits. I must say the uh, Die Hard one does look cool. Ah, okay. Um, forgot to put the kit details on that one. Oh, that is Dora Wings 148th, and that is a uh, F. Uh, sorry, a P43 Republic Lancer. Two different versions: the American or the U.S. Army version with the uh, Red Indian uh, chief's head on the side, which is quite cool. Mm. Not bad. Look, a little bit of a stumpy looking look. Looks like a pre P forty seven, doesn't it? Like a trainer yeah. for that plane. Yeah, it's like a stumpy P forty seven. Yeah. Uh, Kinetic are doing the one hundred four J and DJ because everyone loves a DJ. Uh, you get a two in one uh, Starfighter Japanese Air Self Defense Force. Lovely. Good looking plane. Now, uh, as I'm sure uh, if you've only been living under a rock, you may have not heard, but Meng are the company that were going to be producing the DR1 for Wingnut Wings. As Wingnut Wings is now no more, Meng are now releasing the uh, Fokker triplane. Um, so if you're really lucky, and you get your orders in now, you may be lucky enough to get one of 1,000 to be produced with this uh, um, figurehead of the Red Baron. Uh, but as I say, there's only 1,000 kits being made to go worldwide. So you'd be lucky if you're going to get one. Um, but the kit on its own is going to be available. I'll put the prices later on. But yeah, it's there. It's available. It's all good. Um, from Revel, they've updated their Leopard and they're doing the 1A5 now. Uh, not exactly sure what they've actually changed. Maybe they've just added a couple of bushes. They've added the foliage. Yeah, the foliage. Yep. The bag, um, of, bag of things. <laughs> from your Evolution Miniatures, they're doing US Special Forces in Afghanistan. That's two good looking figures, that is. Pretty much correct for the uh, type of period they have in. Uh, Revel, I've got a 132 Hawker Tempest. Whose kit's that in there? Hey? Whose kit's that in there? <laughs> Special hobbies. <laughs> oh, someone's going to get a great surprise. I built these when I was a kid. Some of these are great, these Revel kits. What the <laughs> hell is this thing? Skill <laughs> <laughs> oh, level that's... five. Yeah, they need to put about another 15 on that thing. Like a skill oh, I was going to say, that's not level five. That's far beyond five. That is advanced modeler only. Yeah. yeah. Someone's going to get very disappointed by that when they open that box. Well, they, not when they open the box, because it looks great in the box. But it'll be it? cheap. Mm. No, well, that, no see, that, that's, that's Well, it's not going to be that cheap. It's That's going to be 50 odd quid. It's still, I'd imagine it's going to be co It's going to be cheaper than Special Hobby because Revel, they do. They always sell it cheaper than... And is where, it where, where all all the Is it missing they, extras in there? No, it's just plastic. It's you know they do just the basic range where it's only plastic. Yeah. That's what you're gonna get. You're gonna. Oh, get so plastic. someone's gonna be shopping in Hobbycraft and see that and think, oh, I get that. Yeah. And then take it home like, what the hell is this? Yeah, they're gonna be well shot with that thing. Keep the gear. If you put the time and effort in, to oh, it, it, Yeah, you put the effort in. That's gonna be a beautiful kit once it's finished. But you've got to put some effort in to get it's, that thing. It's yeah. a bit of a nightmare though, to be fair. Yeah, so, um, yeah, that's going to be interesting. I'd love to see you do it, Al. I, th I think you'd enjoy building it. You probably would, actually, Al. You'd, <laughs> you'd hate it, you'd swear at it, but you'd enjoy it. It's not the fa most favourite kit I've ever built, I think. I absolutely loved building that. Especially the two weeks it took me just to fill that one seam on the nose cowling. <laughs> yes. <laughs> two, two weeks, oh. Oh, one seam, two weeks. Wow. <clears throat> A lot of it's work, okay. well worth it. Be interested to see the price of it, Tim. Yes, it will, will be when that comes out. So I wonder how they're going to price that. Um, Mini Art is showing that they're doing a full interior kit of the T3485. 
Nice. Such a good looking tape. Do love a C thirty four. Uh, so that's going to be a Czechoslovakia, Czech, Czechoslovakia uh, production early type. Uh, nice. So you get in that you do get one version which was used during World War Two. Pretty much all of them are going to be um, Russian, early Russian, the Union type used tanks to uh, stop people trying to say that they want to do what they want to do, sort of thing. Um, like the Soviet <laughs> Union. <laughs> That's the one, Soviet Union. Well, no, was it Soviet Union then? Was that how was it called? Yeah. Is it, is it, it then went USSR, didn't it? And then... Yeah. Russian Republic, wasn't it, for a while? Uh, anyway. And now the Russian Federation, yeah. The Russian Federation, that's the ones. Uh, but anyway, moving on from that. Racking looking kit. And just do good, that. Uh, if you're doing interior kit, that's a good one to do, because they're quite, not simple, they they're, a, they're a good size. I did the AFE Club one years ago. Yeah. And it's, it's quite a nice basic interior on them. It's quite good. Yeah. But then, I don't have the urge to do an interior as a cutaway. Yeah, that'd be a good one to do. What you need to do is one cut literally in half. Mm. You know, and you have to build half of it. <coughs> anyway, moving on. Or you could build it normally. You run a bandsaw through it. And you've got two of them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's pretty yeah. much what they did at the uh, for the. Oh, is it Chieftain they've got in um, uh, Tech Robinson. Museum? Robinson, yeah. That's Robinson what it's called, yeah. Is it cheaper? It might have been a bit more than a bandsaw. Yeah. <laughs> Don't know. <laughs> um, so, uh, from Edward, they've got their Mark One coming out. So, yeah, you've got the dual combo uh, that's going to be the first issue coming out, and then they're going to be doing a single boxing of it, uh, shooting down Stukas, which I'd imagine are going to be Stukas over the beaches of um, Sherberg. Calais, sorry, Calais, as they uh, try to evacuate, is what I'm imagining that better be. Good, another Spitfire. Yeah, oi, always need more. That's the yeah, RF. Especially one that's a bit more complicated to build than it actually needs to be. Yeah, as, as, the RF, as the RF always said, we always need more Spitfires. Or they said about hurricanes. I'm too sure. No, we don't. No, we don't. But anyway, uh, it's a Mark 1. Whether it's going to be any better than Smears, I would be thinking probably not. No. To me, it's, to me, it's wonderful. If you're, I find the, the build job complicated. Yeah, exactly. I, I think I've got going... more than two parts. You're doing about forty-two. Yeah. If I was, if I was going to do a Mark One Spitfire, I'd, I'd buy the Tamiya because you know it's going to fit and be good. But hey, yeah. on, let's see. Um, from RPG, nice. they're doing the That's cool. Hamaz Typhoon VDV family. Yeah. Just thirty-two. That thing with that cannon on the top is yeah. pretty damn cool. Yeah, so the, the Typhoon family, I built the Typhoon people, or oh, a troop carrier, didn't I? Yeah. But yep. the Typhoon is the essentially the Russian MRAP family of vehicles. Okay. That's nice. Aren't many that, that that well. well, well, Who's this company RPG then? They're the same people that did those uh, ship mounted. Oh, yeah. uh, cannons. Yeah. Um, they did a couple of other tanks as well. I, think I, I, do, I do like that. I think I have to get one of them. That's cool. Has, the, has Meng not just released that as well? I'm I pretty know. sure Meng have just released something like this as well. Yes. Yeah. I think I've, I've seen. I, I, I think I've, mi I've missed it this week, but I'll have a little look around for it. I'm pretty sure there's a couple of companies now done these, going to be bringing them out. But yeah, looks pretty good. Wow. Lots of photo etch. Anything that's gold is photo etch or metal. So yeah, you get metal barrel in there. So that's good. That's cool. Uh, I saw this from Kit Form Services. If you're into your trucks, you know who these people are. They're doing in 124 scale a BAC Bloodhound Mark II. Nice. Which I thought was very cool. So it's got like a weird tractor unit. It dry. It's it's driven on. Is it there? The Bloodhound wasn't that could be it could be vehicle mounted um yeah. but for years they had them as like almost like coastal defense missile system in okay. the they've got they've got a bloodhound sitting as a gate guardian down at RAF Hendon mm -hmm. 
Well, okay, they did. I actually haven't. I don't know if they've seen it there recently. I'm sure they've still got it there. Uh, but yeah, Bloodhounds, a um, cracking looking bit of a uh, kit that is. Oh, there we go. Moving on. Um, <laughs> didn't mean to do that. Meng, I reckon we do an egg boat, boat plane build group build. Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> uh, no. on, can, you, can you see that? No. Yeah. <laughs> I'll say that. I'll say that transport aircraft. It, if it comes with that dinky little tank, will be very cool. No, move along. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I say I just want to. I want to see that transport aircraft come. No, tank. move along. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and they've got the uh, Cleveland over there. Very cool. Uh, from Dragon, they're doing a one four hundred scout international space station. Oh God. Ooh, uh, and it's their own that, new mouldings. You know for a fact that'll be fiddly as. Oh, it's going to be so fiddly. And it'll break every time you look at it. Yeah. But it will be the Lego coolest one. Thing. It'll be the coolest thing ever. Yeah. yeah. Very cool. Once you understand the instructions. Yeah, once you've figured them out. Once you've applied mm -hmm. to about 12 wrong parts and melted them and made them look like a melted welly. Roden, they're doing the Fairchild C123K or UC123K. The, this kit has already been released uh, before, but now it's been uh, new, a few new parts in there. So it's the Agent Orange plane, mm. uh, which is quite, um, which is quite, a, quite a story for. Uh, of Vietnam, so it's it's quite a it's quite a plane that dealt quite a deadly blow to everybody who had anything to do with it. Yeah, horrible stuff. Weren't yeah. it weren't it Vietnam's anniversary? Were it today or yesterday? Uh, yesterday. Yeah, I didn't see that. Was, in the news, was that was wow. that the end? Was that the was that when they pulled? I mean, that was that when they pulled out? You mean? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Tim. Sorry. Um, Sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, is, that, is that official? Was that their official pullout or the early pullout? <laughs> anyway, it was, it, was, it was the anniversary, and it was the anniversary. Anyway. Okay, yeah. So yeah, just um, to be this for the Agent Orange planes, which were um, quite a deadly, uh, deadly thing for everyone involved. That was unfortunately. Uh, Freedom models doing the uh, Rocaf. Uh, XA-3 AIDC I'm not sure what that is Li Ming single seat ground attack aircraft Ooh, okay. not bad looking little plane it looks more like a trainer to be honest uh, they're doing an Italian petrol station from the 30s to the 40s with a pan to four randomly rolling past I'm going with four it could be a three I'm, I'm, not, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not putting the names of that one but I like the idea a little Italian petrol station. And that's no one's work in there. It's no white flag. No. Oh, look. <laughs> Not, oh, it, it's pizza. It's siesta time. That's why. Um, <laughs> Spain, Tim. That's Spain. Spain. Hey, do wrong, the same thing there. Wrong side they? of the Pyrenees, Tim. Sort <laughs> say, so, so your tab out from Paella, will you? <laughs> <laughs> Oh dear. My brother's not so Italian, so I'm getting trouble. Um Aoshima got a couple of their A eighty five an A eighty five and an A eighty six kit coming out. Um, hey. both, both good looking little cars, then. The Torino and the Levin. Those are so bad. Nice. And hang on, one of them's got pop up and down headlights. Pop up and down headlights. Uh ICM's one forty eight B twenty two C. Between six C, sorry, uh, the invader the, from the Korean War American bomber. E models forty three pounds forty eight euros fifty four dollars on that one. Lots of rockets on the bottom of that. Uh, ICM's three axle trucks available over E models as well. Uh, forty nine pounds fifty four euros sixty one dollars, and you do get three trucks in that kit. Uh, so not a bad little uh, bundle for uh, if you, if you need some trucking. Uh, an ICM's one for Cessna O two A push 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 and pull plane. That's quite cool looking. Blood, isn't yeah. it? I like that. American recon aircraft. It's are those rocket pods underneath the wings on that thing? Yes. So it's not yep. very recon if it's going around shooting up shit. There's a forward air control. 
So, so would a rocket's more to give something for the for the, them to aim at then? Yeah. Okay. So I'll, I'll, it's it's like I'm gonna blow this up a little bit, then you come destroy it, sort of thing. Pretty much. <laughs> okay. Cool. Uh, accurate copy of the prototype. Oh, of the prototype. Wasn't this highly detailed armament and cockpit interior? Four markings variants are included. Okay. Uh, Hasegawa's counting on their uh, uh, loading stuff. This is Hitachi wheel loader. I got what? It's a grabby grabby. That's what that is. Dan will be happy to grab her. <laughs> yeah. Grab her. I like that. <laughs> I like that weirdly. Yeah. Weirdo. <laughs> uh, Kinetic re releasing another version of their 124 scale Thunderbolt. This is the Razorback. Is that Razorback version, is it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's in British markings. Yeah, decent cards for a change. Over the uh, pointy places. Nice. Mm. Needs a bit of needs a bit <coughs> of uh, regrouting down there. Uh, also, Kinetic have announced that they are going to be releasing their Harry OGR one three and their IA fifty eight. What's that thing at the bottom called? Oh, I think Gara. 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 Yeah. Uh, they will be releasing it. They haven't. They haven't forgotten you, Norm. Oh, uh, don't worry. They haven't forgotten you. <laughs> so they've like two so. years. Uh, Rebels Jaguar E type. There's a couple of the test shots for it. So you do get full interior, full engine, and a full under under uh, under chassis as well. A few places out there to get it. I'm still seeing. I think the cheapest place at the moment is Jadlam on that one. Looking good. And from the cams, which is pretty much Reesh, which is pretty much Bronco, uh, they've got the Vickers six ton light tank with full interior coming out. Cracking look, great looking little tank. And a lot of detail to build on that one. It's very cool. Uh, Kinetic's doing another version of their Alpha Jet. This time it's the Luftwaffe anniversary Alpha Jet. So you get lots of paint, lots of colours all over it. Yeah. Very nice. <clears throat> nice aircraft. Same over yeah. the scheme. Uh, and as I said earlier, the main 132 Fokker DR1, now the standard kit, you can order now at Veteran Small, £63, €70, Euros, $79. There's going to be loads around, so don't worry too much. They're going to be out there <clears throat> and they're going to be available. But if you want one, go get yourself one. A uh, couple of little things. I found the Fisherman Bridge. You don't get no fisherman on it, though. Get the bridge. But you do get a bridge, yeah. Uh, and what is quite for, cool from a Duba, Dubanand? Anyway, they're doing an F4 Phantom drag shoot. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> oh. That is something that's sadly missing from the modelling circle for I, I aviation. I thought it was some kind of slide or something. Sorry. <laughs> mm. uh, the, only, the only thing I'm looking at that drag shoot and thinking, yeah, whenever I see one of those drag shoots, it's usually half dragging along the ground. So the bottom edge of it is usually touching the ground, isn't it? Uh, usually, whenever I see them, it depends. Yeah, yeah. In the initial stages, yeah, because I mean, it can take a solid block, doesn't it? I mean. It's only only after the initial first, as it's released, yeah. it gets full on, and then quite quickly it starts to come down and it sit, sit on the ground. So you need to try and f flatten out the bottom edge. That's the only thing down the side I thought of that. Thought. Most of the times you see them, they're usually half dragging along the floor. But cool idea. Like yeah. It. Yeah. Nice idea to have a jet, uh, a jet slowing down on a runway with all its air brakes open. Very cool. Um, from Model Factory Hero, we've got a one scale, one twelfth scale, full detail kit Ferrari three one two B from the nineteen seventies. Nice. That's a fantastic. that's a cool car, isn't it? Yeah. Very very very, very nice. Cool. And Mini Ops Focke Wolf C CA Herskers uh, late production. Herskers. Anyway, very cool. And that's it. That is me ended. Uh, I can go have a little nap now in the corner. Chill. Hey. Uh, 
Well done. Well, well done. Well done. Dan, I went for Dan's section to really actually have a problem with that. Yeah. <gasps> <laughs> <laughs> How very dare you. No, no, how very dare you. How very dare you. I, I, I use it to have a little bit of a have a little bit of an eat. That's what I do. Really? Eat. Yep. Who would have thought that, would you? Catch up on chat. Where were we at? Don't know. Uh, up up. Uh, yeah, uh, best thing I've watched a movie once. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, is the cat wet? Bob's your uncle. Back in two. Um, uh, Codename Flapjack. Robbie B says he's missed so much. You're going to watch it from the start. Don't blame me. Yeah. Uh, have a look. Yeah, Luke asking of those NASCAR kids curve size. And as uh, Bill, Sergeant Bowen said, no. Full interior engine. They yep. have. Uh, yeah, and it's in the it, chat as well. Americans love their engines. Yep. Apparently, the ROP on the Tempest is forty nine quid. Or I was found for forty four ninety nine. So it's the same price as the special. Yeah. yeah no. No. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Well, okay. That's full RRP. So you can imagine you uh, maybe not yeah, about it's ten or off. Yeah. You were talking about the space station size. Going to be a big one. Apparently, the white phosphorus rockets for market targets. Uh, oh, Chris Fortune's there saying hi, guys, and hi, Paul. Hope everyone is well. Uh, E-Tight looks nice. Did actually, didn't it? Yeah, this does look good. I uh, think so the only thing that's going to let it down are the wheels aren't really proper oh, um, wire. Foot, uh, yeah. spokes, they are, they are back so, solid with some what, um, like, uh, it does show the wires, but not brilliantly. So it's a good area for the aftermarket guys to do. Yeah, I'm sure somebody will bring them up. That's <laughs> now I've done it. Hey? Uh, Luke Ward says he'd love a model factory hurricane. Pricey. It doesn't look out to skill yet. No, they're not for a beginner. No, definitely not. And Daryl says, well done, Tim. Thank there you, Daryl. We are all caught up. Flying through the show tonight. Yeah. And we've got left to do. We've got uh, questions for the crew and Dan section. We're all yep. done. We is on fire. On fire, I'm on fire. It's warm in here tonight. Twenty five point two already. You, you pinch him one yet, Paul? <laughs> what? What? Nothing. What was that? <laughs> What'd you say, Tim? Uh, nothing. Nothing. Yes, you did. Luke. What did you say? <laughs> Something about stealing. Um... Oh. <laughs> yes. Very judgmental. It's, from, it's not from Liverpool. <laughs> oh, oh hey, hey, I've got you've got to uh, add some sort of list. Yeah, what anyway? Moving on, <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, it's a tab warm tonight. There we are. Um, if you're around in the morning, we'll be live on Facebook again by half nine. Hopefully, if anyone's looking around, wants to jump in, feel free. Uh, and tomorrow night at 9pm, I'm over on Gil's channel. Um, yeah, I've seen that advertised earlier, Paul. Well done. Um, so, yeah, you can come over there and watch and give me some abuse over there. Yeah. <laughs> what? We wouldn't do that. <laughs> that Red Dragon or Styrene? Red Dragon. Red Dragon. I have to put a, a marker on that one to make sure. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, tune in for that. And then we'll be going live again on Tuesday morning on YouTube. So get your notifications on, sub to the channel, click the bell notification, and uh, come and join us half nine tomorrow morning, half nine on Tuesday, and 9 p.m. on Red Dragon Model Works' channel tonight for me and Gil. Cool. Yeah. Um, challenge is nearly done. Show the video for that up over the weekend as well. Um, just got a few more little bits to do. That'll be done, and get that alpha mayo out of the way, and then we can crack on with the the Vault Mustang. Oh. Hmm. Don't worry, Chris. Chris, as you would say, what Tim says doesn't like to I'll go back and watch it. Don't worry. Mm. Don't you worry. Bill says, Paul, for the cat lines of cars, you can grade them deeper. How do you get them to look so correct about her doing it? I, I leave them as is, mate, and put your washing before you clear them. It's well easier because the panel line's there. And even if your 2K is a bit thick, which 2K is, it's part of the 
down, not downside, but the, the trade off. Um, do your panel lines first and don't go straight black on white. Um, mix it with a bit of grey to make it a bit more subtle because it looks a bit too much. Uh, Daryl, there, there is a post on there, mate, um, about the T55, but just post your own updates as you go. You don't need to do a whole post and keep adding to it. Just like normal on a bill, just add your updates as you go. And at the end, we'll ask for completed finishes, which I love that there are many of. But we'll see. <laughs> Somebody outside the group might actually finish one. Yeah. <laughs> and that is that. So there we go. So, yeah, I'll probably start my T55 maybe tomorrow or Sunday. Got my full tracks on the way. Uh huh. Mine too. Yeah. Uh, and the kit looks good. It's going to be a very busy build. Oh. But, uh, definitely looks good. I would open a section on the forum, but it's very cool <laughs> over there and everyone ignores me. So I think I'm going to. We'll just leave it to Facebook. Leave it over there, I think. And that's it. Ah, oh, would you like to do questions for the crew? Ooh. Uh, possibly. No, we didn't want to do it. Jim, do you have uh, any questions for the crew? No, I'll, I'll, I'll get it to you somewhere. I, 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 I know I had it there earlier. Here we go. Right, are you ready? No. No. Huh? Nope. Pay attention. First one is from Donald Masters. And it's a, an oblique question. He says, Haribos from Hana, brackets UMP, is it best to roll them into a ball for maximum fruity goodness or peck at them like a pigeon? How does the crew eat theirs? I, I just hoover the back in one go. <laughs> <laughs> I just... Shake it all in and oh, hang on, Dan. Dan, how's it go? Yeah. <laughs> well, Dan. Is that gone? Crack on, Dan, to see what what? Yeah, Dan showing us how he handles ba a bag, a couple of bags. Oh, he's used to that. Well, it just, just doesn't shove them down on the table and hoover them up. There you go. Yeah. Open the bag, get back, and away we we'll go. I'm not a fan of Haribo's, I gotta admit. I'm, I'm, I'm a pigeon, I'll peck at them. Peck at them. I've yeah. got grandkids and I don't get a chance at them. <laughs> yes, I, I, I take mine into the house because normally I open the, the parcels in here, take them into the house uh, uh, and I'll leave it around and then they disappear. Yep. If by magic. Yep. Well, mine don't get the chance to go downstairs. <laughs> downstairs in the house, I mean, by the way. Uh. <laughs> in case Dan was thinking something. Yeah. I, I'd already thought it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I had a vision of... No, Harry, no, no. <laughs> Harry Bowes and Mr. McCord and rolling about and... <laughs> as long as it wasn't with the drill, I don't mind, Dan. There you go. <laughs> okay, question, question oh, number no. two. <laughs> Hold on, Al. Hey, Hold on. Hey. Back here, will you? Yeah. <laughs> Question number two is from Radiger Adams. He says, good evening, guys. I'm going to be trying my hand at using oils for dot filtering on aircraft. Mm -hmm. He's not sure uh, as to where in the sequence it should go on. Uh, after applying a UMP wash or before? Thanks and have a great night. Well, he's using oils for a pin wash. Yeah. You don't, you don't want to use UMP then. You need to use either or. Dot filter. Yeah. Oh, he wants to dot filter it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, after the UMP. Yeah, after. But don't let it pool up in the panel lines. It's very easy to do. Don't douse on the thin. If you watch my tank video, it should be out over the weekend. I show doing it, I think. Yeah, do you? Um, and you'll see how very little thinner I actually use for the dot filter. You don't want to be flooding it on just enough to get the uh, oils to streak and fade and what have you. Otherwise you end up turning oil into a pin wash again and then it'll lose all the effect. Yeah. I would I do it the other way. I know he said about aircraft. Um but on armor, so I do the dot filter first and then the pin wash. Yeah, sorry, I um no, yeah I still do the pin wash first and the dot filter. Yeah. Sorry mate, I was, I was getting confused. Yeah. Either oh, way yeah. it'll work. Either way it'll work just fine. Yeah. yeah. 
different. personal preference, really. You, you, and, like Paul said, as long as you don't cover the thing in, you know, dinner in, to try and get the order, and it doesn't pull, you will end up with the same effect. It's just personal preference, what you want to do first. Yeah. So would you... And you don't need clear coats. Okay. Oh, right. what you can, oh, you wouldn't would need a clear coat bef uh, between, no? No, no okay. he's been putting oils on a flat. Um, it comes off. These are nice stain. Yeah, so if, if your paint works flat, you can put it straight on your paintwork. You don't need to put a clear coat. Oh, oh, if, oh, all the armour I've built over the past couple of months, now it's been cleared in any way, shape or form. No, no flat, no gloss, nothing. Lose all your effects mm -hmm. under it. Really easily. Really easily. Okay, okay. Right. Uh, thing, I keep getting talked over. Hello. Go on, Tim. Hey, hello. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, when if you're doing this, when you're doing those pin washes and then doing the dot filters, if you find that your dot filter then starts coming up pin washes, just go back over and do your pin yeah. washes afterwards. Don't don't be too worried about keeping things in a schedule that you have to do this and then you have to do that and then that's the next step. If you're finding you you've lost detail of one step, go back and add it. Don't, don't be worried about keeping it so move, move along the build as you go. Yeah, yeah. that's it done. Thank you. Okay, okay then. Next one's from Simon Reid. He's asking, what innovation would you like to see brought into the hobby? Innovation. People building stuff for you so you don't have to do it yourself. And then <laughs> a uh, built-in uh, finisher and painter. Innovation. Mm. Oh. 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 Cheaper, oh. cheaper 3D printers and being able to stuff like that, maybe. And, yeah, they're, they're going to come about anyway, aren't they? Over time, yeah, so yeah. I was going to say, I think give it another 10 years, maybe. Do you reckon? I don't think it'd be that long, I reckon five. Yeah, uh, and resin printers without the smell. Mm. Be a tough one, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. That's that because that, Dan's resin print. I've seen my mate's one, it, it, it's he goes, it's it is really good, it was, but the smell you can't have it in your house. I'm I'm pretty much immune to that smell now. I, I use uh Elegoo's resin, and I find that Elegoo gray to be not that smelly, to be fair. It's it's the any cubic, I must admit, that is a bit whiffy. But only I only notice that if I've been in cave, leave the cave, then come back, and I can just smell it. But other than that, I don't smell it. And and all the fairies in there with them, and pink elephants floating around. <laughs> yeah, nothing to do with anything. It's it's the weird people sat on. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah I, think, I think I would like to see, which you know is coming, as we've said, that you have a printer at home. So if you remember years and years ago, if you wanted a video game, you had to go to the shop, buy the disc, yeah, put it in. Yeah. Now everything streams, download the game, don't you? You don't you don't have a, a hard copy of the game as such. And I think probably ten years you'll go onto I don't know, Meng's website, pick the download you want, they'll send you the file and you'll print it at home and build it. Yeah. Unfortunately, they're struggling anyway, but that will kill a lot of businesses. Yeah. I think um, I think it will be a good way of um, adding to them as well, though, because there'll be a lot of... Yeah. You'll, you'll be able to find maybe that the aftermarket companies won't have to worry so much about the printing and production side of it. All they'll have to do is the, 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 the design and the CAD designing... And then the print designing, and then okay. sell off that to individual people yeah. so they can maybe print, print it twice. I think that's that's what will come first. Yeah, is you know you'll I don't know you'll have a T fifty five and you want a storage set for it or whatever it is. You'll go onto a website and, and download it and it'll print that for you. Yeah. Um, but unfortunately, the, I think the downside of it it will kill. The, the problem is. It, where the area it comes in the problem with is once you've got that file and you print that, there's nothing stopping you printing it again and sending it to your mates. Absolutely. So where they could have sold five sets, 
it might get to a point where they sell one set because there's, there's that one person printing it. So they we wouldn't do that. Hey, <laughs> we wouldn't do that. No, no, but it, it will happen. It will happen. So they've got to find a way to allow people to only maybe print it twice. Mm. Something like that. I don't, it, it, Dan, is that sort of something that happens with those? Take that and get our miles away. Uh, how many, is there something that you, it stops you from printing it tw uh, like as many times as you want? No. You can only print it once or twice. Once no, you've got you, the file, you've got the file, haven't you, you? you? Yeah, once you've got that file, if you bought it, downloaded it, whatever, you can fill your boots. I'm just talking to a fellow now about uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> commission work. He wants me to print something, so... Yeah, it's, it, that's, that's the downside of it. Is I was saying, once you've got it, you can keep printing that off until yeah, you, you until can fill you your, your boots. Yeah. The only thing with that is, if you've downloaded it for free, then selling it, then making money out of it. If you don't, if you don't do the right thing and either support the person who designed the file, yeah. or you know, cut them in or whatever like that, then that that can be quite frowned upon. Well, and, yeah, and, but yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Very true, but what's unfortunately what's stopping them? It because it, it needs to be that's, some sort of update. And, that, and that's, the that's the other, that's the other grey it. area that well, I own that file, so I can do with exactly what I yeah. want with that file. So yeah. if if I bought a file or downloaded a file once, I've got that. If I deem it's mine, then that's it. I can do you know, print it, sell it, do whatever I want, share it around with mates, and yeah, there's a lot of grey area. Still with this 3D printer malarkey, and you do yeah, like it, it, it's, yeah. say, it's, it's a good idea that you can print your own stuff. Oh, definitely, yeah. But it, 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 it leaves it very open for the people that yeah. are designing the stuff that they'd make oh, virtually yeah. no money from it. So they make, make some think, what's it, what's it, why is it worth doing that if they're yes. not going to make anything from it? I mean, I follow a few people on, on YouTube, and they all state, you know, that it's, it's bad karma. And the 3D printing community is technically like the modeling community. Whereas, you know, <laughs> there's weirdos and strange people and blah, blah, blah. But oh. the, it's not a big circle as what you'd expect it, you know, to actually be. People over there will talk to people over there and then your name will get mentioned over there. And then before you know it, you've been blacklisted or put across 12 Facebook pages and, yeah, you're getting a ton of messages. You weren't like that, Dan. No. <laughs> <laughs> But it is a very, very, very grey area. The old uh, owning a file. Uh, yeah, yeah, I think I think what will happen. I think the technology will come really quickly. It will be yes. the legal side of how they're going to make that work. That's going to take the time. That that will be the issue. Yeah, I'd like to see something similar with uh, with the likes of aftermarket decals. You know, where you could go to mm -hmm. a site and download a a set of decals for for you so you could print off yourself you know yes yeah that, um, that possibly would be a good idea yeah i mean there, there are companies out there aren't there at the moment if you if you send them an image or yeah that will do that for you but at a quite high cost yes yeah because they've That's... got to then produce the artwork and everything else if there was a program that you could go on i don't know like photoshop s you can put your image into it they give you a prize and away you go. No. It, it can be done. It's just that there is quite a lot of work in taking a photograph and yeah. sizing it up and uh, and everything. Yeah. And 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 the yeah. the photograph has to be kind of straight on, if you like. If it's yeah. anything at an angle, it, it just gets all very very complex. But yeah, printing off of that is. Uh, yeah, I was going to say, one problem with, like, I'm sure Dan's experience now and understands is, although you might only be allowed to print one, something once, only being able to print something once is a problem because you could quite easily get that print wrong. Yeah, yeah. So it could take you three prints until you get it right. So it's, yeah, it's a bit of a, it's a strange situation. I know, isn't it? I know for a fact that some of the things that I have got really, really good prints at, there's probably took six or seven attempts at it because it, it's all down to the orientation and blah 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 and blah 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 and yeah and it it's I mean you can waste I don't know four hours five hours just putting supports in or taking supports out for instance that particular dragon there the very first dragon that I did that one 
that I spent, I don't know, 20 minutes on the first print and I might as well have just melted 12 carrier bags on back garden because that's what it come out looking like. <laughs> and then for that particular one, I think I spent four and a half, nearly five hours putting and adding and moving and turning it and blah, 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 and just to get a really good, perfect print. And I probably, to be fair, I probably could tweak that again for another hour or so. And yeah, there's a lot of work involved. It's not just, see people, and that's the thing, People that see 3D printing, they think, oh, I can buy one of them. And it's just, you download it, you click print, and it prints it out. Yeah. It does. But there's also the hours and hours and hours of work that you have to put in behind the scenes to get it right. Otherwise, you're just going to waste hundreds, hundreds, and I mean hundreds of pounds worth of resin. Don't ask me. I don't know. Do you have, to, know. Kind of, do you have to kind of understand CAD? Do you have a to little bit. A, yeah, a little bit. See, the machine never never bothered me. I've watched that many videos where, you know, I can buy the machine, I can print out the test cube, which comes with the photon. It's a little, where are we? There we are. It's just a little box that says uh, any cubic photon in the middle, and it's, it. you know what I mean? And I, I was never scared of buying the machine, leveling it, filling it with resin, getting it going, blah, blah, blah. What scared me was the slicing software and the 3D designing software on the back end of it that, I've spent hours just getting square eyes looking at Mac for hours and hours. And I still, I, I will admit it, it still gets me stressed, you know, to the point where I want to turn my MacBook into an iPad by ripping it in half and just, you know. <laughs> and, but it's, I mean, I'm 43. When I were at school, the only computers that we had at school was the BBC computers with the, yeah, with the colored keyboard. Yep. Yeah, the floppy disks and all that. And I, and I were a naughty boy at school, so I weren't allowed on the computer. So oh. I'm, not, I'm not Bill Gates. So it, it takes me a lot longer to figure mm -hmm. out stuff. Uh, and yeah, the CAD and the 3D has just been, um, yeah, it's like, it's, it's yes. Yeah, I might as well try and shoot the information into my brain with a shotgun. So long story short, no one's got any idea about innovations. No. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I think Jim's got a question. Yeah, it could Not be. Not so much a question, but I was just going to add on to what Al was saying about printing your own decals. You know, what's going on here with the 3D printing? You know, just like Dan said, you got to figure out the CAD. Well, if you're old like me, I, I can't figure all that stuff out. I want to be able to have a printer that I can hit the print button and boom, I've got my uh, my resin stowage or I've got my my resin doodad aftermarket for whatever part. Or since printing decals, you know, now you're at the mercy of the quality of your printer. Well, why not send us a file with all of a, a, all the markings of a, a airplane or aircraft or car or whatever and you hit print and then you 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 put that in your your cutter and it cuts you a mask and now you can put your masks down and and paint you don't have what, to worry about the quality of a print of a decal. What I probably would say to that is, if you want a a resin printer, let's just say for a resin printer, you, you just want to buy a printer and press print, you can do that. You could also uh, just pay somebody to either design or slice your file. So all they do is <coughs> when they send it back, you get a full STL that you can just plug your stick in, download it to that, plug it in your printer, press print. You can do that. That is not a problem. What you'll get is you'll get a million people say, I can do that, I can do that, I can do that. And if you drop unlucky and get, you know, you've paid somebody 25 quid, let's say, to design you something, uh, slice it, put it, make it as a as an STL file that you can just plug in and print. Yeah, you don't know what you're getting unless they've got a proven track record. I mean, some of the things that I've seen on some of the 3D printing sites that people have paid good quality money for. Yeah, people need maybe to know. Maybe that's the way a lot of these aftermarket companies go instead of making yeah. masters and pouring resin and shipping and getting breakage in the mail, they sell you the file. It's all right yeah. there, you know? Yeah, yeah. And there's, there's a bunch on uh, on Facebook. I've had a, a couple of files sent to me or traded on, let's say. Um, um, that somebody's purchased and now I have them. <laughs> <laughs> but again, it, we're, we're stepping into that gray area. But if you want, like I say, if you want to just to buy a printer and have something that you could just plug your stick in, press print, you can do that. 
it just means you might have to pay somebody else a bit of money, 20, 30, whatever they want to, you know what I mean? All right. You know, it's, it's, it is doable, but you, you might have to run around the bushes a little bit just to I mean, on, 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 on the other hand, you know, if you're printing decals, you've, you, you, you've got to think about color, you've got calibration, oh. you've got everything, but as you know, so resin, I, have, you've... I have, I have tried to print a decal and didn't go very I think well. the mask works work so well. Yeah. See what but, I did. But a mask cutter is. Yes. Dashed expensive. Uh, I was going to say a, a plotter, just a small plotty. Yeah, big dollar. Yeah. Big dollar. I have looked into buying a plotter, and I've also looked into buying a laser engraver cutter CNC type arrangement. And I have the room, but not the wallet. Let's say at least this <laughs> year. But yeah, I do plan on adding more toys to my cave down that particular side, and yeah, maybe yeah. next year then. Mm, okay, okay. Yeah. moving on. Uh, the next question is from Dan Croak. He's asking, does any of the crew read or contribute to modeling magazines, for example, Airfix Model World or Tamiya Magazine? No, no. no. I've been asked many times by Tamiya uh, and Airfix. Um, Airfix actually muck me about, to be honest. Um, Airfix, Airfix do. Yes, sadly. Um, and Tamiya, yeah, Mark has asked me many times, and I don't really want to do it, to be honest. I, I want this to be a fun hobby and not stress. For, for me, that puts you... The second you say, yeah, you're under pressure then, before you've even done a thing, you've already put yourself under pressure to produce something that's magazine quality or you know you've got to make sure you've got the right words for the right photo for the right bit for the, you know what i mean and if you i, miss, I could do all that no i can no, oh not. yeah definitely it's just, it's just the pressure and the expectation of the end person that's going to pick that magazine up and go wow do you know what i mean it's yeah i can't deal with that sort of pressure, that pressure. I'm, happy, I'm happy to entire them on youtube i'm I'm, happy I'm i'm happy <laughs> It's, it does put a lot of, like we've experienced a lot of times, a build can go very different ways. A build can go absolutely smoothly and perfect, or it can really throw a massive spanner at you to the point where you throw it out the window, you put oh, it back yeah. in a box. Then if a magazine's like, oh, you, you, where's that build? You're like, you're like, well, I've had enough of it. I, I, it's, it's annoying. It's, I don't want to do it. I don't want to finish it. It, it. And then you know they're going to be like, oh, Wow, we, we, need, we need this for the magazine. It instantly puts pressure on you to then build something that you don't want to build. Yeah. And yeah. I think it's all fair and well when you build something and you, you've you enjoyed it and you've done a build and then they're like, oh, can we can we include it in a magazine? And I'm like, okay, yeah, I can. I can that's, that's, the that's slightly different because that, you've that really slightly is quite cool. Oh, yeah, yeah, I can give you some pictures. I can give you, and if you've got good enough pictures and you can write up for it doing bills for magazines where you on a deadline or they've oh. given you something for them for, to build for them. Yeah. I change that changes the, the whole that dynamics of everything. Yeah. Yeah. You just, yeah. You just, you just ask him for a, a, a just a headache. Really. <laughs> yeah. I did it in the well, mid, mid nineties. I did aircraft scale modeler. Uh, everything was typed out on a typewriter and everything was photographs. And I <laughs> it off. Oh yeah, mate. There was no internet, nothing then. Uh, any mistakes? It was sent back, and you had to recorrect them all the time. Uh, you were put under pressure because you were basically given a kit. It was sent through to you. They give you say six weeks to build the kit in, photograph it, write it up about yeah. it. There was no like you say you couldn't go on the internet and find information. You had to go to the library and get books, and you used to buy tons of books. And then books. they'll send you two kits. He means books, people. He means books. Sorry. Books. Yeah. Yeah. books library. Books. Then. They would send you two kits, then you had the same time period. They say, Oh, you've got eight weeks now to do two kits, two reviews. Then they would send you three, and you had six weeks. And then the yellow to give up. I said, I've had enough. The time constraints are, uh, yeah. Yeah, they pressure. Uh, and them days, you didn't get paid. You only got was the kit. You get to keep the kit. Or whatever they sent you, you got to keep. And that was it. That was your payment. Brother. Yeah, that was it. So I have never done it since. Next, next question is from 
Dan Crook, again, funnily enough, he says, has the internet and its content made it easier or harder for new modelers? Uh, oh, good question. It's going to be easier as a source of information, but also confusing when you go on a Facebook page, post a question, and then repeat that question over 10 different Facebook pages, because that's just <laughs> like a one. Yeah. You'll get so many conflicting views. Um, so it has helped, in my opinion, but if you're going to look for a source of information, try and find one that you're happy with and stick with it. Don't go cross-posting everywhere because you'll get 100 different answers to one question. Yeah. Definitely. But it's got massive improvements. Huge wealth and source of information. Yeah, I think it's made it what was quite a solitary hobby. If you engage with the internet, I mean, look, look at this. Look at us lot. Every single day, chatting away. So much more sociable now. And a lot of people find this hobby, particularly later in life, through challenges or whatever you want to call it in their own lives, and it's their escape. And the danger is you can become quite isolated. Well, we don't have that, do we? Because we're all standing here all day, every day, chatting away. So the internet has helped in that way. But the problem is you can, like, Paul said you can have too much information so rather than just sitting down and building a kit you're looking at all these different websites and they do it that way they do it that way they use this product they use that product and it for a new modeler that can be quite overwhelming i think yeah it's a double-edged sword isn't it it, it's, i think overall it's positive but you've got to you've got to just measure what you do and who you listen to i think Better to have too much than not enough so you can make your own decisions. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah but as a beginner, those decisions are right. really difficult. Mm. Yeah. Well, well, which one do I go with? Yeah. Try one? Try one? Yeah, absolutely. It, it I mean, is I, very much, it's a bit of a, um, trial, a lot of trial and error within yeah. the... Uh, right. Within the and I think a lot of the problem with today, especially with younger modelers, is the fact that it's an it's instant gratification uh driven because they're so used to that and they want to turn out something that's you know showrooms i mean or a, a masterpiece on the first get-go and it's yeah you know, not gonna happen that gonna never happen. happens <laughs> never happens gonna it's happen. like the, ma the magic I'm 40 years in still chasing it so <laughs> I'm still trying. It's, I'm still trying. It's, it's the magic mig wash isn't it buy this product and it will produce uh, this i'll put this all over my model when it turned it like this Mm -hmm. yeah. there's, there's a big difference said Paul. between uh, products and I said that today didn't I they're not magic washes nope. you've got to learn how to use them it's like buying an airbrush in it Tim and expecting it to be a miracle worker yeah. <laughs> it magically gets clogged all the time that's about the only thing they, but it's the thing yeah. they always rely on good question though except the UMP that never gets clogged yeah, yeah. Right. well unless I don't clear it out properly and then it gets <laughs> but, next uh, that Dan, Dan, Dan's got another question, uh, stroke query. Um, why has Darrell only asked one question this week? Is, is oh. this, <laughs> which, which Dan is this? Dan Croak. Oh, okay. So I was there for it's Dan. asking why Darrell has only asked one question this week. Slacking. Uh, Good question, so. Um, the last one is. Uh, that I can see is, is a question posted in the chat earlier on from Jeffrey Holmes. He says, hi, I have a question for question time. I'm starting a bike model, which is chrome parts. Uh, now, is it best to leave as is or strip the chrome parts and re-coat them or paint them? Depends on the age of the kit and the quality of the chrome. Some of the newer stuff's pretty good. Um, and all, the old stuff's not, and you need to strip it. Did he ask what with? Uh, no. Okay. Um, so, yeah, it's your personal opinion on that then. Generally, modern day kits, kits in the last four or five years should be okay from my experience. Although I've had a few lately that haven't been great. Um, getting the chrome back, it, it's one of the hardest metal finishes to get back. Right? Yeah. So, pick your fights really on that one. If you think you can keep it and get away with it, keep it and get away with it. 
if you think you have to strip it, if it's got seams on it or anything like that, you're screwed straight away. Um, like some of the bike kits, the frames are cr- like metal finished, um, and you need to refinish them. But quite often, some of the stuff that's chromed isn't actually a chrome finish in real life as well. So again, research, pick your pick your fights as such. Yeah, and um, <clears throat> yeah, see what's what really. Just depends. It does vary from kit manufacturer to kit manufacturer. Some are, some of them are really thick and they look really odd. Uh, but some look absolutely fantastic. So, yes. Anybody yeah. else? The 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 quest for uh, a decent chrome is, I think, ongoing. Mm-hmm. Mm. Uh, there are good ones in that. And here's Jim. So just to add on to that, um, you're right. And I, I, you know, they do the molotovs, and people use those or certain paints. What I tried, and what I with that uh, 312, I did um a you start as always with your high gloss black and then instead of using a, a metal paint um ushi puts out the uh van der rost and puts out the uh the metal of th- three different metal colors and there might be other companies that put out the, the the polishing powders the downside is once it's on you yeah you can't touch it so if it's a part that you're going to have to really manipulate to get into a model and you're going to get fingerprints all over it then that might not be a good option but if it's something that you can get away with painting and then just mounting and be done with it that is is a pretty pretty good finish i mean as far as chrome goes it's like yeah it's the holy grail of 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 a true uh finish to to replicate but that's it's not bad way to 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 try and replicate it it's not it's also not one of the best things to uh to, to coat or cover you know, with a, a, a clear coat. It, it, it just... I do have that McLaren Chrome Effect set from Gravity, and they have a clear coat for that. I need to test that. Oh. Uh, Antonio from Gravity Spain was pretty confident that's a good Chrome, so I will test that from there. Keep forgetting I've got it, actually. I need to do a video on that. It might be my next video. Okay. okay. Yeah. Right, that's it for the questions for this week. Well done, James. Cheers. See if we missed anything in the chat. We'll do your section next time. Yeah. You want to get yourself all fired up and ready to rock and roll? <laughs> uh, Model Works Force and Chassis and Evening, folks. Uh, what's happening with the end caption? Asteroid going to wipe us out? Uh, uh, no idea, mate. What? What end caption? I'm lost. Uh, Scott says, come to the forum, we still love you. Actually, ignore me too. Oh, I get completely blank. I've given up over there, Scott. Given up. Uh, 1991 says, goo, 10 dislike. Okay. Uh, Tape into a window. (laughs) (laughs) No, no. Yeah. Robbie B says I'm going to watch a new Greyhound movie with Tom Hanks. Oh yeah, definitely. That is good. I, I'm I'm going to uh, subscribe to Apple Movies so I can watch that. So it's, it's the only way you can watch it, unfortunately. Is it? Mm. I, hmm. I, I might try that other place. Mm, to thought that. Oh. I, I'm not sure if there's something we need to delete there, but I'm not too sure. Uh, Chris is saying uh, JPS Mark Three Nineteen Seventy Eight Team Lotus. His memory says gold effect lettering, but Tammy will supply pale yellow. Pretty sure it is gold, isn't it, JPS? It is, yeah. Mm-hmm. Black and gold. Uh, gold decals. Um, what scale is it? One twelfth. Uh, taboo decals do some, but they're not the best quality. Um, go on spot model or hero boy, Chris, and just put it in there, JPS one twelfth. Uh, do you think if Bandai started mainstream kits? Other manufacturers will be worried. I reckon so. They used to make all sorts of stuff, didn't they? John Stone says, found you all through this means. We're just starting after 40 years. What I have found is an inspiration that has become a great help. Please continue. For those that follow and look back when we're all gone. There you go. Al doesn't need a break. Because Daryl said he'd give Al a break this week. Oh, cool. Yeah, C1 models do it as well. It's good stuff. I've got a review on the channel somewhere. I, like, I do like the original <laughs> fertilizer powder. Yeah. Good stuff. Uh, Steve says, the good thing about this group is you have similar opinions and give much 
the same advice because we've been there and tested most of the stuff and it's a proper opinion rather than someone recommend the airbrushes someone's only used eye water and they recommend eye water because they're the best it's like well you've only used eye waters how do you know they're the best it, it's all subjective then yeah i think i think yeah we're, we're all pretty along the same lines aren't we but that comes from what you guys don't see is that most of us work depending are sat at this bench for eight ten hours a day chatting to each other so one of us will try one thing and go yeah that was no good or this is brilliant try it and then all of a sudden over a period of weeks or months there's a consensus then because yeah, one of yeah. us or a group of us will find something that works and then we all try it and go yeah that does work so we've, obviously then we're going to recommend it to others because yep. it works simple as that we spend more time together than some married couples do. I yeah, it, it, I it's it's married couples. <laughs> you know. Uh, Daryl's got his started his hobby a long time ago. He's missed out on a lot. Uh, with help of watching YouTube, it's now only my ability to practice now, through practice now. Uh, Yanza cool. said, hi guys, nice to see you again. And hello, Chilo, Jan. Chris says, cheers, Paul. No worries, mate. Daniel's there saying, start 30 odd years ago. But I wait too, uh, too many breaks on the way. Never stop learning. Though. No, you never do, mate. You never. never. Constant. Right, Dan, you ready, bud? Oh, really? just, 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 just a second. Oh, um, oh, that, no. A bit further back in, in, in the chat, Luke Ward's uh, asked a, a question for, for for us guys. He's saying, "What's what's your all-time favourite paint?" He's recently had issues with zero, which is a shame due to the <laughs> range they have. Mm. I think. Oh, well. uh, I prefer gravity to zero for car paints. Uh, I think lacquer is definitely the way forward, full stop. Yes, definitely. Uh, I love all the gravities, um, the grey paints. Got zero as well. They do work. Just got to know how to paint them. Uh, like the Tammy TS sprays, they're fantastic. But for me, uh, Tammy LPs. Yeah, my... LPs all day long for me at the minute. Yeah. But I've just started yeah. using the AK real colours, and I guess they're kind of like a military type of lacquer paint yeah. to go with the Tamiya's in a way. Yeah. Um, they're very, very good. So, overall favourite, I'm going to go with LP. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm going to like say all that. The, I've, I've like, nearly got two full sets. Like all the guys here, we've mostly got every single paint for maybe aqueous, Tamiya, yeah. flats, gloss, and I bought the set like the rest of the guys of the LPs, and I love them. I think yeah, they're I'll brilliant. Although I will say that the new color shift paint from Green Stuff World, I, I really, really like that for an acrylic color flip. Yeah, that's that's awesome. I mean, I think it depends on your subject matter. Yes. Um, so I've not been doing this as long as some of these guys. So I, my first paint range was the XF. Mm. And I still like those paints. They're so user friendly. But I've now got the full range of LPs, and I don't think I've touched an XF paint since I've had them, really. Yep. Well, so I'm, yeah, the I'm exactly the same. I've got, LPs, I've got LPs on this side, and some XFs on this side, and yeah, the yeah. LP this side always wins out every time. So for airbrushing, the LPs, on the recommendation of Paul, I'm going to invest in some AK real colours. Because the LP range for the models I build, which is predominantly armor, is very limited in, in colors. So real color, again, lacquer based. Um, but for brush painting, I still stand by model color. Oh, yeah, model color. Great. And that's what Gareth just asked that. Can you hand brush the LPs, e.g. figures? You can hand brush small parts figures you won't be able to do. No, no. Model, model color, mate. That's yeah, model color. I was out of model color. We're painting figures you want water based because going back over the lacquer or any other thing it just takes the paint back off. Yeah. The only thing you might not colour, don't make the mistake I did and went out and bought pretty much the entire range, I think I've got. Um apart from like the Panzer Aces and stuff, but actual model colour I've got most of them. Um and some of them I've never opened the bottle. <laughs> um and they do go off over yeah. time. Bearing in mind, I've had those for five years, so you can't really complain. Um, but I would say 
buy what you need for what you're doing. Definitely. Uh, rather than make the mistake I did and go out and get them all thinking you're going to yeah. use them. Because there's some even now I still haven't even opened. And I know that when I do open them, they're not going to be great. But that's yeah. just... All, all water-based painters are shelf life. If, yeah. if I want to say, if if I were going out there to buy water-based acrylics right now for the things I paint, it'd be Badger Minotaur all day long, all day long. They've got a, it, it's it's not so much armor-based or anything. It's not anything based really. They've got weird names and they're just pretty colours really. But I've noticed that they last longer than the model uh, air. Uh, not model air, yeah, the model air and the model color because yeah, the model air I can't stand terrible. Model air just goes stringy and snotty, and I've, don't get me wrong, I've got I've got a dozen or so, but yeah, they're only specific for what I wanted, and mm. most of them, I bet, I guarantee you most of them have gone snotty already. Uh, Whiskey <laughs> Tango Foster in the chat says, "Is LP range any different to Mister Color? Both are lacquer. Mister um, Color is good. I think the LP, I've got the edge on them personally, and they don't smell as bad either." I don't think so. I like the I like the pigment size in the LP paint. It's very, 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 very fine. The colour are still yeah. good. The colour are still good, but I do prefer the LPs. I must confess, as an aircraft modeler, I I, I do like the MRPs, mm. um, and I can build up quite a quite a range of them. But uh, the LPs I'm finding are when when you get the mix ratio right. Yeah. Are, are are a lot better. The 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 coverage seems to be. Um, you need less coats, or you know, thin coats of uh, the LP uh, are are more dense than the, yeah. the MRPs. No, so, yeah. Can I upset Mission Models? Be so happy. Good and bad. So recently I have used a couple of Mission Models paints because the colours are very, very good. They're, they're a really good match, to certainly for armour. Really good match. Um, but don't believe the hype about you need to add polyurethane, this, you need to add this, you need to add that. I mix it 60-40 with UMP thinner and it sprays perfectly. Yeah. And it's hard wearing. I've weathered on top of it without a clear coat or anything, and it works fine. They're really good paints, really good colours, but you don't need all the extras that go with them. UMP thinner works fine with them, and they're, they're as hard wearing as any other paint. I got all the grief over on the mission models page. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, there you go. I'm going to get rid of it. I won't get the grief. You'll get the grief. I, won't. <laughs> I, didn't, even get, I didn't even get thrown off. I left because we were being complete assholes. Yeah. No, but it, works fine. it works fine with you and Keith, you don't need all that other stuff. I, I got a review of them on the channel, I show it working. Mm -hmm. And for that reason, John, John Tamkin, I think his name is, stopped talking to me. Sent me them for a review, yeah. and I sent a review of my bath dinner at work, and he said, No, it won't. So I bet it does. And it did. He never talked to me again. <laughs> <laughs> so, so fickle, this hobby. Honestly, it's mm. great. Mental. But yeah, I, I wouldn't buy them if you paid me. <clears throat> Real colours, AK, fantastic. Very impressed by them. That's that's my next big investment, I think. Fields of Glory sell them. Yeah. 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 Very, very good paints. Much good, sir. Well impressed with this. Really am. Cool. Is that it, Al? We all done? Hey, yeah. Excellent, mate. Well, Al. Come out. Dan. Oh. Are you ready? I was born ready, son. Fire it up, so Dan's going to go for all your work on the Facebook page and forum. Um, please make a note of your favourite builds of the week because you will get to vote on them at the end. Make a note of the builder on the subject. And the builder of the most votes, which you'll get to do at the end of this, um, will win a £10 UP gift voucher. So pay attention and over to you, Dan. Hello, everybody. Hello, Hello Sausage. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're going to start on the forum as always. Uh, the first one out the gate tonight is Ranger Neil. He says for the summer sci fi build, he's just started on the reimagined Battlestar Galactica from the 2004 reboot of the TV series. Uh, ah. He says it wasn't the kitty originally planned to, uh, to build, uh, but horses for courses. 
Uh, it's not a bad kit, 60 odd pieces uh, to make up one of the three battle stars. And thus far, it's going together quite well. I suspect the greater part of the work will come in the painting rather than the physical build. I built that particular kit and it is a nice little kit, believe it or not. Martini paint on. Is it? Sorry. Yes, yes, mine will look oh, little yeah. and it looked like a martini. Uh, is that yeah. really that scale? One four thousand five hundred and one. Where what? It's in his sig in signature. Uh, oh, I don't know. That's an odd scale, isn't it? That's mm. a very strange scale. Well, I think it's a Revell one that uh, that I built, so I don't know if this one's a. One that's been slightly tweaked, but I know I've built that particular brand and it were I find it all right. It was pretty good. Needed a that, few pumps here and there, but <laughs> that reminds me, was it three or four years ago at Telford where there was that display and the guy scratch built everything? Oh my god, yeah. Amazing, he, right? Oh. Amazing. Years of work. It makes you want to just come home and sell everything. <laughs> yeah, <absolutely. laughs> I do like that. I like it when it's progressed and it's got a bit of colour across it. Uh, this is uh, Rob W UK is how I'm going to pronounce that one. He says he's completed the second side of add-on armour for the Trumpeter Type 89 IFB. Uh, just one small bit to go, then it's off to the paint shop. Right. Okay. Nice. That's a lot of eye strain right there for me. I'd break it all. Oh, and here's Brad, Aurora, 145. Oh, but Popo's uh, uh, down yeah. there. Uh -oh. All night, all night I've been sat in here. <laughs> Good God. Anyway, back to Brad. It says, <laughs> howdy all. Uh, this is a Sabine Wren's TIE Fighter from Star Wars Rebels. Uh, this was his second entry into the summer sci-fi SIG. He's a bit greedy. Uh, the kit is a Bandai First Order TIE Fighter in 72nd scale. He's primed it in ultimate black and grey. Paints used include Tamiya XF85 rubber black, XF83 medium C grey RAF, and XF2 white, X28 park green, X6 orange, X8 lemon yellow, uh, plus tons of masking tape. And he hopes everybody has a great weekend. I like that. Very nice. That's way different. Mm. I like that a lot. I like different things, though. Uh, <laughs> F27 Packs is next. He says, good evening, happy modelers. Wrong channel. Uh, <laughs> progress, uh, the beautiful new... Oh, it's a MiG-19S. There is other words, but I'm not going to butcher them. It's late. I'm tired. So it's a MiG-19S. And he says, so far, so so far, so far in an overall, to me, AS-12. Uh, <laughs> bad boys, bad boys. What you going to do? <laughs> Bob up. And now my lamp's doing a bit of a spooky thing at me. Anyway, back to this MiG 19S. It says so far in an overall to me uh, AS 12 bare metal lack -like finish with extreme metal AK uh, 476 steel blast panels. It says more excitement to come. Hmm. I like a MiG, but I don't like, I won't build one. I, no, I like to look at them. Uh, this is Tomcat64. He says, evening, young Dan. Uh, this week, he's been working on his Mini Art 35th scale SU-76. Uh, there are a lot of fit issues. No. Uh, but this one is getting there. Last, painter's been Ultimate Black Primer and Vallejo's Model Air Orbio set for the bodywork. Next up is weathering and whitewash. Not necessarily in that order. And Sorry. stay well, everyone. I like that. Nice. Looks good. Cool. El Capitan is next. Uh -huh. He says, quite a lot of progress since he last posted this. It's a 35th scale mirror model CMP truck. Uh, he's primed in ultimate grey, painted with Tamir Olive Drab, and now started weathering with some chipping and rust patches. That's looking well, isn't it? 
The strange shape, though, that into it. You can tell it's very early war. Yeah, wasn't that the, the one every cab. panel was different, small panels? The cab wasn't one unit. It was no, it were, yeah, it were all individual bits and bobs, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I remember. That's looking well. It was like whoever designed that truck back then, he'd never seen a truck before. <laughs> 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 he'd seen Ernie and his milk float or something stupid. <laughs> looking good. Uh, this is One Small Step, 1966. He says, good evening, everyone. We won't bore you with another version of the N1 rocket. He said he finished last week, but he's ended up making another. Uh, so here are two 3D printed Star Wars death helmets. He quickly painted this afternoon. Uh, he had no intention of painting them and only made them to test 3D printing techniques. But when his eight-year-old nephew, son-in-law, uh, saw them, uh, his jaw dropped open. So he thought he'd make a nice surprise and uh, paint them first. Pardon me. Wow, they are so cool. Uh, I, have, I have them filed somewhere. Stormtrooper one is excellent. Yeah. I will. I must get a Stormtrooper helmet to uh, um, <laughs> stand in my cave to go with Darth Vader. I, in an ideal world, I want an old Stormtrooper and a First Order Stormtrooper helmet. To, uh, but I do, cool. like his, I do like his bone effect. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, go on. I was going to say, Lou, that's lowering the tone of the show. You do realise that, don't you? <laughs> we don't do that thing here, you know. <laughs> Chicken molesting to lower the tone of this show. <laughs> <laughs> that was never proven, and it wasn't John. Oh, oh to make it once. <laughs> and that's the final of the evening. Oh, good one to end on on the forum, that really. Watch this. Boom. Straight into face eight. Oh, seamlessly oh, perfect. Oh, I love it. It's so good. So good. And the first one out of the gate tonight is Mr. Gilbert Mondragon. That's cool. How oh, brilliant. That is cool. Says he's been working on this 3D printed piece. Another one. Uh, yeah, this is his second one, I do believe he's done. Yeah, I think he's done this one as a commission, hasn't he? Yeah, he's, uh, he did them both as commissions. Okay. Uh, it's by NY3D Creations. He shot it with a Badger Sotar 2020, uh, primed with Sandable Automotive Primer Filler. Paints used were Vallejo Game Colors and Liquitex inks. And he's also used Badger Minotaur Ghost Tint Magenta for the rosy highlights. Them ghost tints are the And that looks awesome. The green is. Knows his way around an airbrush, doesn't he, Gil? Oh, well, sometimes. <laughs> I do like I do like where he's moved into now. I do like what he's doing these days. Uh, this is uh, Mr. Assad As Osmani. I apologise if I butchered your name. I do apologise. You did and... well, there. I didn't do bad, mm -hmm. really, did I? Uh, this is a Warhammer Age of Sigmar miniature. Uh, it's uh, uh, hang on, it's uh, the Craven King. Dodge that one, uh, brush painted. Uh, the king is still not on his throne. <coughs> oh, you're right there, <laughs> steady now. Who was choking? Who was choking? Or are you being serious? <laughs> no, it was me. I coughed. Oh. <laughs> you all right, yeah, fine. You've got Rona, have you? Dog has. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm fine. <laughs> oh. uh -huh. Whatever it is, he's after I just didn't put in a box for me. <laughs> Check for hairs. Wait, there'll be no hairs with this head. <laughs> uh, this is Mr. Peter Seagrove next. He says he's finally finished his Tacom 35th scale King Tiger with full interior. Wow. Uh, painted and weathered, done with MIG paints and products apart from primed and UMP. It's turned out okay. It's Very cool. Okay, no. Very cool. No, I yeah. like that. I like that a lot. You're a brave man. Very, very brave. Uh, this is Mr. Antonio Rodriguez next. Oh. And I like what he's done with his picture there. He's, he's done it in a very, you know, like bare naked and then fully painted. And then two stages in between. I like that a lot. 
Uh, this is his whip on a Warhammer Age of Sigmar. It's a uh, Stormcast Eternals Lord <coughs> Lord who? Celestant on Star Drake. Why can't they just yeah. why can't they just say it's Pete riding a dragon? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks brilliant, doesn't it? He says it's all painted with a brush and the paints used are Citadel Vallejo model game and air colours and Andrea colours. Sweet. I do like, I must admit, I do like Antonio's work because yeah. next week it could be a military jeep or, you know, yeah. something completely the opposite end of the scale from Warhammer. I like that a lot. Uh, Mr. Jake Duffy next. This is his Academy 35th scale hemp of oh, 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 oh. This is his Academy 35th scale MH60G Pavehawk. He says lots of corrections and scratch building on the engine. On the engine, <laughs> <laughs> on the engine, and finally took the plunge and closed up the fuselage halves, but forgot to put in the drive shaft for the tail rotor. So some surgery must take place. Hashtag face palm. Nice work on engine. I like that. Yeah, I like that a lot. Looking good as well. Yeah. Ooh. Mr. Luke Ward next. Mm. Ooh. He says he's been working on this one top scale chain and sprocket for the Honda RC213V. 12 pieces for the sprocket and hundreds of pieces for the change. For the change? For the chain. <laughs> God, it's late, isn't it? I'm not doing it when it's this late. Not really, Dan. <laughs> no, it didn't, to be fair. Wow, I have been up yeah, since five. So it, it says it's fiddly but fun. Yeah, yeah. That's cool. brilliant, man. Yeah, I don't think, yeah, if I tried to attempt that, I don't think it'd turn out half as nice. I wouldn't get it. one linked on down to the window. I might have a sprocket or half a sprocket and then the rest's all bent and mangled and thrown it then. Ooh, I like this one as well. Uh, this is Mr. David Sean. Oh, is he a phrase? Uh, no, he's, I think he's uh, been keeping a low profile. Uh, of course. Uh, he says he hasn't posted in a while. <laughs> 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 he says he's not posted in a while over here, uh, and he's sorry for that, but he's been, he has been on the bench. Uh, here's the 3D printed RS2000 Escort that he's been working with. Uh, the body came printed in two halves where the seam is in the middle of the doors and the roof. Uh, it was wavy and uneven due to the support engulfing the body and no door. Uh, hung, 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 hood, trunk and other mole lines so far. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so he's been doing body work and scribing in the missing details and adding on the missing mouldings. Uh, is that to scale it up three times to get it to 24 scale so they can use it with the Esky slash Ravel slash Italieri RS1800 kit. Uh, he's such a fan of the Mark II Escort RS1800 and RS2000s. He plans on cutting one up, uh, one of the underscale bodies to transfer the stock fender archers onto one of the Italieri rally kits later on. That's, That's a lot cool. of work that he's doing yeah. right there now. That's cool. I like that. Pretty cool. See, he's got the right idea, though, by working with outside sources to get exactly what he wants. It's just the... Yeah, there's a lot of graft in that, though. To Yeah. Uh, this is Mr. Declan Grant next. He says he's finished his Tamiya GT4 Celica ST185 in 24th scale. He sprayed it in zero brilliant white, uh, cleared in Pro Range 2K, UMP solutions for the decals, photo etch belt set and spare wheel strap from KA models, bare metal foil on the fuel tank and some Tamiya braided hoses for fuel lines from the tank. <coughs> That's I like nice. that. That looks good. Yeah. Oh, this is Mr. David Sargent. Oh, he's building a Bing. Oh, sorry. Uh, this is a 35th scale dragon AH6 killer egg. Uh, Cobra Company. Oh, update. I, <laughs> I'm, I'll, I must be more upbeat about these egg planes. 
It's not an eggplant. No, mate, it's not. It's an A86. It's a Caius. Yeah. Black okay. It says egg in it, so it's an eggplant. Oh, no. It's called a killer egg. <laughs> it looks like an eggplant, and it's... <laughs> Anyway, it says it's uh, update set currently building the RB mini guns and it's private with Mr. Surface of 1500. Yeah, nice. Cool. Nice. <laughs> if it's got an egg in it, I'm not interested. You just lost me interest straight away. Yeah. Unless it's on a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be fried and laid across some bacon. Hey. Uh, this is Mr. Abel Good. Nelson next. He says a little of this and a little of that. Nice buccaneer. <laughs> cool. That Harry is looking good in background. I'm just saying. <clears throat> uh, Mr. Scott Shaw next. This is Ravel's A6A Wild Weasel Intruder in 48 scale. Uh, he's giving appreciating another go around, uh, considering the raised detail on this piglet. Uh, Vallejo model air, dark grey blue applied with his trusty eye water eclipse uh, with a point, point 0.5 needle, nearly burped everywhere. Hopefully this uh, get the top side done after dinner and a break. And coming on. Yep, yeah, I better push in. Push in. Keep going. It looks, yeah, I like it, but it's a pain in the <clears throat> proverbial. Uh, Mr. Dave Watts next. This is his, to me, a 24 scale skyline. Uh, a couple of bits of dust to wet sand. The MP Black Primer, to me, an X1 base coat with Pro Range 2K with pigment added from Cool Cars UK. Nice color. That is not. Mm. Good shine on that. See, I never thought about adding pigment to it. A... I was just going to say, so so he's got the 2K already and he's just added pigment to it. Yes, and he's used X1 as a base coat. Wow. Yeah. That's quite, uh... Looks good. Yeah, yeah. that, yeah. Look at finish. Banana Man, Mr. John Stone. Hey. He says, greetings once again, slaves to the plastic. This week, we see them. The completed Trumpeter 35th scale Russian Brem 1. He's primed it using UMP Grey. Painted using Mr. Hobby Paint, pardon me. Oils by Ammo of MIG and Metal Tracks by Fruel. Uh, he used thick string to replace the wire on the toe chains, making them easier to manipulate. A build with lots of small parts and great fun to build. Thanks for looking. I hope you like it. We model on. That's right. Nice one, banana man. Yeah, what like you, need, you need to use Dacron if you're using it like that. It comes in various thicknesses as well. Just saying. What's that called? Dacron? Dacron, yeah. It's it's what they use in the furniture industry and fishing industry. You know, like braided fishing line? Uh, yes. Yeah. Dacron comes in many, many thicknesses and different strengths. But it's really good stuff. Yeah. It looks like the real thing. And it does look like a, a woven metal tow cable, yes. I've got about 3,000 metres of it up. <laughs> <laughs> hey. I was going to say, Sam will know exactly what yeah. I mean. Yep. Oh, this is Mr. Luke Carswell next. Oh. Speak of the devil. Hmm. And he says, so this week he's finished the 35th scale Tamir Challenger 2 desertized. He's added some black dog resin stowage, scratch built antennas, and aerial recognition panel. Uh, primary in UMP grey. The base color is Mission Models British Sand Yellow. He's weathered it with a Tamiya Panoline accent. UMP washes, make oils, and pigments from a non specified non specified manufacturer. Watch this space. Uh, clear coated in Windsor Newton acrylic matte coat. All sprayed through his apex and happy Friday and happy modeling. Nice one, bud. Very nice, look. No yeah. wrong with that, mate. Yeah, oh, that looks well, buddy. Not full enough yeah, with that soft focus filter, though. So. I don't <laughs> know what happened on that. I really don't know what happened. I need to work on my photography. <laughs> Lou, wipe the Vaseline off the lens, mate. Yeah, I, think, I think that was the issue. <laughs> <laughs> it's a long night in the early morning. Oh, okay. uh, so oh, I like good. this one at all. Weirdly, yeah. this one really gets to me. This one, I like it a lot. Mr. David Holmes is next. And this is his Heller T20 tractor 
in 24th scale. He's painted it in model air light gray, rusted using the MIG rust effect set, EMP washers used for the dirt on the tires, etc. Mainly an out of the box build, just added HT leads and a dipstick. That is like brilliant. That. I really like that. that. And it's a Heller kit, it looks like yeah, that. That's yeah, that's surprising. That's really that cool. nice again. No, I do like that. I like that really a lot. Cool. Are they rubber wheel, rubber trucks or are they? I think they are rubber tires, yeah. Uh, cool. I'm going to say yes. Oh, Mr. Daniel Blair next. Oh. Uh, and this Good. is the Revell 24 scale 1965 Chevy truck and speedboat combo. Uh, the truck and boat primed into Tamiya Grey. The truck is top coated in model master metallic green and some Tamiya Clear. Uh, he's used the uh, trunk decals from a 68 Chevelle kit on the hood and some Pegasus aftermarket rims. He's also used aftermarket wood slat decals for the bed uh, as this kit did not come with wood decals. Uh, the boat is sprayed in flat black base to go with the color shift emerald turquoise uh, the interior is tamir white uh with tamir light sand metallic uh is used after and that didn't make no sense light sand metallic cool uh, uh, light sand metallic must be right no idea nope He's used aftermarket decals for the instrument cluster and radio. Have a great Friday, all, and a happy Independence Day to his American model building compatriots. Looking good, Dan. Nice work. Nice yeah, work. Right. Very nice work. Yeah. Green's yeah. quite a nice colour green. Yeah. yeah. It's not going to have some lovely work, isn't it? Uh, Daryl Masters has been working on nothing, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Peter Thompson next, though. He's been working on his Tamiya 32nd scale F16. Oh. He says, this is a really lovely build. Everything fits together like a glove. Uh, a real treat for modelers. He made his own seat belts as he ruined the kit ones. Uh, he's added uh, a resin intake cover. He's used light ghost gray, medium gray, gunship gray, and only light weathering where he thought necessary. And he honestly hasn't Got a single bad point uh, in building this kit, and have a good night all. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's that, isn't it? A lot of work, I. It's a lot of work. It looks good though. It's Does look it? and build. This is Mr. Chris Stover next. He's working on this to me at thirty second scale P fifty one D Mustang. Uh, it's a very nice kit. The interior is painted with to me and model master paints. Nice, looking good. Yep. Oh, nice, yep. Good. Is that about that stage? There's Mr. Patrick Kennedy next. Oh. He says, just off the bench is this Aeroshima 24 scale Toyota Super Woofer High Ace van. Oh. He's finished it in Tamiya TS57 Blue Violet and TS63 Pearl Clear. Uh, the kit has four springs and screws to pull the body down low. One second, I'll just get that off my wife. Thank you. Ah, burning. <laughs> Burnt fingers. <laughs> yeah. oh. uh, where were we? Uh, yeah, you got uh, four springs and screws to pull the body down low. Aeroshima called it the low down springs. Uh, also included were vent shades for the doors. Just another fun, quick kit before doing a more involved one please excuse his first attempt at a multi-image he's just found a way to do it that's good that's well that's that's really that. nice that's really good for me. i like that color though weirdly nice color. Yeah, those kits and never give them any thought but that's cool uh this is jan mcdell next it says just a small little truck it's a trumpeter 35th scale grumble the beast, that thing, isn't it? Oh, <laughs> my word. Uh, and he's used to me a paint. Yes. Look forward to seeing that come along. It's huge. Yep. Say, that's a beast. It's so big. <laughs> that's what she said. 
<laughs> uh, this is Mr. Clinton Eels or Chunk or other C words. <laughs> this week, I was going to do it in an Australian accent, and then I thought, no, I'll sound like Tim. <laughs> <laughs> well, that good. Well, isn't it? He's been working on the Tamiya 24 scale uh, Calsonic Skyline GTR. He's primary in uh, UMP Black Primer, painted in zero Calsonic Blue. The wheels in Tamiya TS17 Gloss Aluminium, uh, dash and seat in Tamiya LP5 Semi Gloss Black. Decals and some 2K necks. Thanks for looking. Cheers. G'day. G'day, Chunk. Oh, yeah. oh, nice, Chunk. He's doing all right, and he's doing all right. Uh, this is Mr. Malcolm Plum. Uh, he's, this oh. is his Hasegawi 24 scale Lancia Delta HF Integrale. It's the. It's the. Uh, it's the. Evolution. Yeah, it's that Italian word that we don't really need to say. He says he's nearly done now with just aftermarket engine detail and final assembly to do. Uh, the resin HF Recaros have been used, but the aftermarket resin rims were so poorly made that he's ended up using the kit ones instead. Painted with zero paint, Monza red, and clear coated with Gravity Spain 2K. It's a great kit. I had that a while back and I regret selling that rope. I'll have to try and get another one. Yeah. They look awesome in red. It really does. Because yeah, most of them, good. you see them in like sh shuttlecock white. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yep. That's very uh, cool, Mom. Nice very cool. Red. I like That's that. It's red, red though, isn't it? Yeah, it's a lovely, lovely looking red car. Yep, very nice. My mate added uh, uh, an integral. And it weren't no special. And yeah, we were thrashing it down the brand spanking new bypass in Chesterfield. And one of the back wheels fell off. <laughs> a very scary moment. Very scary. Uh, this is Mr. Adam Challenger next. He says, Evening dudes, finished this last week. It's a Tamiya 24 scale Nissan R33 GTR. Uh, Aoshima 19 inch bulk racing CE28. UMP black primer decanted. Tamiya TS17 aluminium paint. And Mipa 2K clear coat. Have an excellent weekend. Mr. Dan Croke is next, and this is his uh, 24 scale Hella Pug 205. Uh, his clear coat applied this afternoon without eating the decals alive. His primer in UMP white, based in zero paints, pure brilliant white. Clear coat with zero paints, clear lacquer. I bet it's still a pig of a kit, though. <laughs> uh, what's your but last, but last two weeks, a good job, it, yeah, but last two weeks, he said it's a pig of a kit. So, oh, right, okay, it's a pig of a kit. Then. <laughs> uh, this is Mr. Simon Shorey to finish the evening off. He says, Evening all, hope you're all okay. Oh. Uh, uh, Porsche 911 GT2. In 24 scale, Tamiya uh, Tyson kit, UMP pink primer and zero Rosso Corsa so far, and a Asigawi 24 scale uh, Joest, Joest, Joest Porsche oh. uh, 962C, uh, UMP white, zero brilliant white, and zero 2K. Very nice, nice work. Very man. nice, man. Yeah, it looks good. Probably. That pink oh, primer looks nice. stunning, doesn't it? Yeah, it looks good just on its own. It looks like that. Right. Um, what were them poor? What are they called? Pigs or something? Uh, yeah. Pink, pink pig. pigs. Pink, pink pigs. That's the no, one. It, no, it no, looks like it was. You could throw a clear over that and it would look great, wouldn't it? I would, yeah, I was just about to say the same thing. Hello. Oh, NASA's well, doing something. Yeah, well done, Dan. Thank you all. Working with, uh, right now, we're going to give you the time it takes for Dan to do a quick recap to vote. So when you see, is Tim still there? I'm still there. I'm still here. Yeah, still camera's off, man. I can't find my pad of paper. Where the hell's that? Oh, your pad of paper. Where's my pad of paper? Um, when, you, when you see Tim say, start your votes now. I don't see uh, no. Let, get, if, if Al can do the start now. And stop okay, let me uh, see Al. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me see Al say, start your votes now. Try and remember the builder's name and the subject. And the builder who most votes at the end will win a UMP £10 gift voucher. <sighs> as simple as that. When you're ready, Dan and Al? Yeah. I'm ready. Ready, ready. In, in three, two, one. 
start your voting now. So we have Ranger Neil with his uh, Battlestar Galactica. We have uh, Rob W UK with his trumpeter Type 89 IFV with his uh, scratch built side armor. We have Aurora 145 Brad with his. Uh, uh, is, five, five. is TIE Fighter, it's a different one though. Rebels. Uh, Sabine Wren's TIE Fighter from Star Wars Rebels, that's the one, in 70 second scale. We have F-27 Pax with his uh, MiG-19S. We have Tomcat 64 with his Mini Art 35th scale SU-76. We have El Capitan with his 35th scale mirror model CMP truck. We have One Small Step 1966 with his uh, 3D printed uh, death helmets. They're cool, aren't they? They are cool, actually. I've got to say that, yeah, they do look good. Uh, on Facebook, we have Mr. Gilbert Mondragon with his uh, NY 3D Creations Baby Yoda. We have a sad. As Marnie with his Warhammer Age of Sigmar miniatures, uh, the Craven King. We have Peter Seagrove with his 35th scale Thackham King Tiger. We have Antonio Rodriguez with his Warhammer Age of Sigmar Lord Celeste on Star Drake. We can't just say Peter on a dragon. <laughs> uh, Jake Duffy with his Academy 35th scale MH60G Pavehawk. Mr. Luke Ward with his 112th scale chain and sprocket for his Honda RC213B. Mr. David Sean with his 3D printed RS2000 Escort. Mr. Declan Grant with his Tamiya GT4 Celica ST185 in 24th scale. Mr. David Sargent with his 35th scale Dragon AH6 Killer Egg. See, I just took shine off it. Uh, Abel Nelson with that. Uh, Scott Shorey with Ravel's A6A Wild Weasel Intruder in 48th mm. scale. Mr. Dave Watts with his Tamiya 24 scale Skyline. Mr. John Stone with his Trumpeter 35th scale Russian Brem 1. Mr. Luke Carswell with his 35th scale Tamiya Challenger 2 Desert Eyes. And Mr. David Holmes with his Heller T20 Tractor in 24th scale. We have Mr. Daniel Blair with his Ravel 24 scale 65 Chevy truck and speedboat combo. Mr. Peter Thompson with his Tamiya 37 second scale F16. I've got horrible art there. Mr. Christopher with his 30 second scale P51D Mustang. Uh, Mr. Patrick Kennedy with his Aoshima 24 scale Toyota Super Woofer High Ace Van. Uh, Jan McDoll with his trumpeter 35th scale Grumble. Mr. Clinton Eels with his Tamiya 24 scale Calsonic Skyline GTR. Mr. Malcolm Plum with his Hasegawi 24 scale Lancia Delta HF Integrale. Mr. Adam Challenger with his Tamiya 24 scale Nissan R33 GTR. Mr. Dan Croak with his 24 scale Hella Pug 205. Uh, Mr. Simon Shorey with his Porsche 911 GT2 in 24th scale from Tamiya uh, and a Hasegawi 24th scale Jost Porsche 962C. Well done. Well so done, Dan. Nice one, mate. Okay, and as Dan's finished, stop <laughs> your voting now, please. I don't even know what the vote is, but I think we've got to run away winner there anyway. Oh, um, oh yes, we have. I, let, me, let me add them up. Yes, I, winning, yes. ones I haven't voted for. I'm going to say I will. I will throw mine out there, but I don't need to. But the tractor. Yeah, I'm going to go. It was on just tractor for me. But well, yeah, I, I must okay. say that you lot voting for that has made the difference. It made a huge difference. It, was, yeah, well, it made, made it a really massive difference. The table, didn't it? There. Yeah, yeah. It's just tips David Holmes over the top <laughs> of yes, completing us a winner. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't voted for the I, tractor I, I, yet. Was, there's, there's, no uh -huh. second, there's no second or third because literally everybody else has got one vote. Really? No one else has got one more vote than anything else. There's a load of single votes. 
Wow. Uh, but every other, but it's uh, David's tractor out front. Yeah. Beautiful there work. Awesome. Nice one, mate. Yeah. No, that was, that was really good work. It looked yeah, how really it's good. supposed to look. Mm -hmm. who, very, who, not, David, very natural. Who, who's, whose kit was this? David, David Holmes. Holmes. David Holmes, Holmes yeah. David, if you look in the description of this video, you'll find an email address. It's ismprizeclaim at gmail.com. If you email me there with the email address you've got registered with umpretail.com, and if you're not registered, register with us. Uh, make sure you click Allow Marketing. Email me the email address you used. I'll pass it on to Lee, and we will sort you out your twenty uh, ten pound UMP gift voucher uh, as well. Who won the other one? Who won the twenty pound one? Ian. Ian Dalfway, yeah. Ian Dalfway, yeah. Yeah, Ian, you contact me as well, mate, and I'll get that sorted for you. Well done. Nice one, Dan. Thank you. Nice all. Thank you. Nice all. For everybody that took part. Um, some fantastic work in there, that's for sure. I'm yep. so glad. I'm so glad we adjusted it where we didn't have to pick. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <laughs> glad. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's getting yeah. harder. Oh, uh. And there we go. All done. Another week. <laughs> Another week done. Um, like I say, we'll be around tomorrow on Facebook. Half nine in the morning. If you're knocking around, come and join us over on my Paul ISM page. Share to ISM. Hmm. Uh, and then on Tuesday, we'll be on YouTube again for a couple of hours. And uh, like I say, tomorrow night over on Red, Red Dragon Model Works, I'll be live with Gil for a little bit at 9 p.m. So I'll be around, come and watch. And um, we will see you all next Friday for the proper live show. So yeah. thanks for all these guys taking part. Thanks for Jim for being our sponsor and special guest. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, thanks for all the hard work all these guys put in as well. So there we go. So we'll catch you all next time. Take care, everybody. Bye bye.